then I go over here to twitch.tv where I can see my own stream. You don't have to do this part, but you can go on Twitch TV to see my stream. Because you don't have a stream. I don't. <laughs> uh, okay, sweet. It says stream starting soon. Beautiful. Oh my god, we got some people in the audience already. Okay. Let's throw Timius. Oh wait, I'm going to show my face now. There we go. And music. That was what was missing. Momentarily. I, I only have overly intense music. I've got some really intense music. But I'm going to click chill instead. There we go. That's pretty chill. Me like you. That. Yeah, yeah, you should meet me in, on Twitch. Hello, Plus Masquerade. Hello, Lithros. All right. Let's get this bitch going. Um, Cheesecake, do you want to do some uh, Jackbox? Yes. All right, cool. Let's bring in Lithros. Hey, Lithros. Hi. You're on Philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. How's it going? Well, it's much better now that I'm in the same lobby as Cheesecake. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Um, I did bring myself a snack. Congratulations. What is it? You'll see on stream in a second. And that's my laundry. Hmm. Much better. ASMR. Now I'm ready to go. <laughs> Let's put this where it belongs. I am going to eat this over the course of the night. All right, Lithros. I'm going to click the Jackbox button, which makes okay. it so that... Oh, yeah, you got a stream. I got a stream. Yeah. So... Do we want to talk about which one we want to do? I did pick up Jackbox Party Pack 5, which includes the full eight-person You Don't Know Jack game show. Uh, it also has a rapping robots game where you write raps as robot MCs. Um, or we could just continue with Quiplash like before. I want to do I want to do at least one new one, but also right. Cheesecake can pick. I'm still trying to figure out how to mute the streams. Oh, yeah. Just hover your mouse over it, and then in the bottom left, a little volume will appear. Do you see that? Um, no. Timius says Sorry. Control M is your friend. I don't know if that's true or not, but Timius seems like a upstanding sort. Timius is a stand-up fellow. Good name, too. Timius. Okay. I think I can see you now. Sweet. Now, the real mm -hmm. question is... Okay, but you muted me? Uh, yes. Oh. So, you didn't see my snack? Um, no. Oh. I'll show you. I have to show you your snack. I mean, my snack. Yourself. Get it? Do you get it? Cheesecake, you're, you're busting yes, my balls. It's a, it's a cheesecake. Yeah. It's a cheesecake. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's a fucking cheesecake. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, now let's actually fix the cropping. Um, why don't you hit stream? Uh... Well, I need to have the game open before I hit that, but I'll just open the new one. And if we decide not to do one of those, we'll oh. switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, thank All you. Right. Tim Timius uh, uh, appreciates my humor. A subtle illusion. Okay, you are streaming now, then I will click watch stream, and then I will 
move. Now I will do the the part where I fix all all of this. Oh wait, it's just too big. That's the problem. It's just too damn big. Oh, brilliant. It's just too damn big. Let's make it not too big. You don't know Jack? Wasn't that a Wasn't that a TV show? I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, Kiwi I mean, Popsicle, so thanks Jack for the follow. Jackbox comes from You Don't Know Jack, right? The company that made the You Don't Know Jack games made the Jackbox series because they were so good at party games. Uh, you Don't Know Jack was a game show on TV. It was based on the computer game series. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You Don't Know Jack. I just want to get the lore here. Uh... Let's go to Wikipedia. Franchise. I recognize this. 1995 to 2000. Holy shit. I want to see the old version of this. It looks great. I just remember this guy with the fucking words on his head. It's just games. It's just like CDs and stuff. Yeah, they were CD-based computer game shows. On the PlayStation. Been on basically we... every platform. Well, that's up to you, Cheesecake. Oh, um, Quiplash, I guess. That's really the only one I know. Uh, All right, we yeah, can... I think Quiplash will be a nice way to ease in, and then we can mix it up a little bit later. Yeah, we'll try like some weird ones. Um, cool. yeah, this has a full eight-person game show thing, which is pretty intense, but it's fun. It's the most like, um, it's the most like the trivia murder party that we did. And then this one is where you make scissor statements. And then uh, there's the wrapping robots one. I don't really know about these two. But none of but these anyway, are we'll do, none of these are quiplash. quiplash. So we'll go back to quiplash for now. I'm all right, gonna all close right. the stream and restart it. Cool. 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 Um, and then uh, if any of y'all want to get in the voice chat just for uh, maximum chaos while we while we stream that, um, you know what to do. That is, get in the lobby of my Discord. That's an interesting statement, Eris. Well, I did I run her through in the Trivia Murder game. Oh, I see. Hey, we I got Prester John Boy. Hey, Prester. <laughs> yes. How's it going, my dude? Um, all right. Uh, my my laptop might be making some um, fortunate noises, and I hope that's not too much of a problem. Yeah, I, I don't I don't hear anything yet. Okay, good. It's always good to always good to hear your voice. Yes, also I I like the jib of this Timaeus tima tima fellow. Oh, is that is that you? <laughs> that's me. I, I, you didn't know that? <laughs> I I guess not. I just did slow. I think I did know that, but then I forgot. It. All right, All right, so guys. if you want to join and you haven't played Jackbox before, you take your phone out, you put in the room, you go to jackbox.tv and put in the room code. But let, yeah. All right. Let's, I, uh, let us I will in. also give rules. I will also give rules. I, I thought about this a little bit. So we can play Quiplash. Quiplash allows you to put in anything you want. I know all you guys so far, but if anyone gets me banned from Twitch, I'm going to kick your ass. So don't get me banned from Twitch by saying fucked up shit. That's the only... Is okay. threatening me to kick our asses good enough to get you banned? Is the what? <laughs> is threatening to kick our asses good enough to get you banned? <laughs> well, we'll see. It, may, it might be too late. But let there, let there not be even more reasons for me to get banned than that. Alright, cool. <laughs> but who we got? I guess my, my face is blocking some... Alright, what's my name? I'm gonna write that in here. Room not found. Oh wait, that's a G. Yeah, I mixed that up too. All right, Soren, you may do the honors. Dude, this is great. I love having the homies in the Quiplash. By the way, there is audio for this cheesecake that maybe you could get through Discord from Lithros. Um, yeah, I can hear it just a little bit. And now, okay. Quiet. Quiplash three. Schmitty goes to Mars and other stories. I should stick myself up there. Host, Schmitty, and let's promise to write each other after this, okay? No? 
What's up, Vogel? That's true cubing. Good to see you, Braintree. You'll get two prompts on your device to answer any way you please. You'll go head to head with another player's response, and everyone else votes on their favorite. Sound easy? That's because it is. You'll rake in the points based on the percentage of people who did yeah. the response. Got it? Great. Cheesecake, do you ever eat this? I do eat cheesecake occasionally. Nice. Ah, time to write answers. This is so hard. All right. That's right, Vogel. I, I'm glad you glad you got that. You know, I have not had the food cheesecake in, it feels like, a lifetime. Hmm, you poor thing. <laughs> yeah. Deprived life. This is like half your calories for the day, right? Yeah. You know, I've been doing a little bit worse on the calorie thing, I do have to admit. Time's almost up. Use a safety I was going to tweet about it. Be honest, you snuck out for a pizza last night after a I ordered a pizza menu. and I saw in the desserts for Uber Eats cheesecake and I couldn't resist. <laughs> if we could just turn off gravity for an hour, it would make blank much more interesting. Oh, we gotta add people. Hey guys, I just added you to the chat. Welcome, Kiwi and P Zombie. Greetings. These are both terrible. <laughs> oh, good grief. Oh, right, fuck, I forgot to vote. <laughs> and next is something you like over here in the White House. Cheesecake beer. And now pick your favorite. <laughs> it's okay, Eris, we have a few rounds. I feel that, Eris. Um, yeah, you're blocking the timer, Kersey, in the stream. Oh! Race. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, who won? Ooh, Did they bad. tie? No, I... You won. Oh, well. I've been nice. It means blank. And now it's time to vote for your favorite. You guys know where to vote. I don't even know what hutting means. Uh, it might be a typo, is my guess. Have job of the hut axe. The hut. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, audience favorite. I got audience favorite. You, oh. you got one of the audience votes. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you, audience. The best dog breed combination is the blank. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> These are both good. It's American slang, probably, but I'm American. I've never heard that bit of slang. You do have a particularly interesting American accent. Yeah, I know. Well, we, 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 all, we all sound like this on the West Coast, you see. Right. <laughs> it's... Next one up. Okay, just between us, which boy do you have a crush mm. on? This is a fucking oh my god! <laughs> oh no! I mean, I I know who to vote for. <laughs> Thank God I'm not in here. This is gonna be a quick clash, obviously. Don't fuck with me! Don't fuck with me! <laughs> Forgot I was allowed to just not answer. I'm too mad. <laughs> she votes for Justin Bieber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're my Justin Bieber, Kersey. <laughs> Love you, man. Oh, uh, if only the M was in there. <laughs> 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 
What is safety quip? If you don't put in an answer. Water. Yeah. Wait, what does it do? It just gives you an answer. Ah. It feels, it feels oh, got it. It just gives you one. Yeah. Right. And here we have... You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it blank. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, my heart is broken. <laughs> oh, ooh, is the oboe magic gone? <laughs> oh, it's gone, I guess. Oh well, lack of day. Instead of this way. An updated version of Snow White suggests you work. <laughs> Here's the fun part. Pick your favorite quip. Riddle <laughs> Sad Obo. Uh 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 Solid. Round one that was a done, rough first round, everybody. That was rough. That was rough. Absolutely. <laughs> Help us, Cheesecake. Show us the light. I think I... I am going to do my best. I was expecting to do Kiwi's my Kiwi's winning. You know. uh. What the hell? Up, I never win these. I call round two. <laughs> Prompts are more out there, and the points are doubled. It's Cat Girl Powers. What'd you say? Cat girl powers. Cat girl powers. All right. Man, my mind is in the gutter today. I'm just going to try to keep it. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Oh, we've got like a whole minute left. I just can't win. He's a bit horrible, and I'm going to get stopped in this round. Uh, Believe in the me who believes in you. Okay. Crazy, your next challenge should wear combat glasses instead of cat ears. Say again? You're, 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 you're kind of like. Oh shit. You bastard. <laughs> okay, make someone happy. Savage. Trying to believe in myself. <laughs> I don't believe it. Kiwi, how'd you do that to me? Lithros, your, your answer is just a fact. Something, <laughs> Something like water is P. It's a joke. Oh, I didn't even get it. <laughs> it's, above, oh. it's above my level. Decisions, decisions. Oh god, this is weird. <laughs> this is just weird. I. I just have. This is just weird, dude. I can't deal with this <laughs> weird fucking shit. <laughs> Who was that? Prester. <laughs> Yours is funnier, but I'm voting for my damn show. <laughs> oh. I don't it know, but very it's, good it's even. Keep it, going. it wasn't very good. A common but... description on a pirate's headstone. <laughs> All, right. All right, choose your favorite. Brilliant. Oh, this one. Uh, that, that's going to be a quick flash, right? Oh, terrible. No, if, if, that, if, if, um, if whoever does, does that doesn't take all the points, I will be livid on their behalf. Oh. 
Get out of here, Kersey. I, I tried for you. I tried for you, Sora. I tried. For you. I, I thought it was uh, topical and amusing. Companies should offer colors blank. Oh. All right, people, it's voting time. One of those things that you read it and you're just like, never thought about it that way. But mm. yes. One of those might be a, a fake quip, a safety quip. Literally nothing. Zero. The audience is fickle. Next on the docket. I like that the audience... The audience is also wrong. <laughs> Usually, pickle is a play way of saying that. <laughs> I mean, these are both um, pretty fucking weird. I like the wink, though. That's pretty <laughs> the good. wink is good. I do like the wink. I want my doctor to say a wink emoji to me. <laughs> wink. And just be like, yo, semicolon, close parenthesis. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow, split. Oh, we have three audience members. That's pretty cool. Right? Did I read that correctly? Three audience members, I think. Oh, the wink has a semicolon, get it? Okay, those both did much better than I expected they would. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just can't. I just, I'm not voting for either of these. I'm, I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse. Who put that? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> no. Still waiting for my brother, the middle child. Okay, what's next? Uh -huh. The opposite of music. <laughs> now it's time to vote for your favorite. <laughs> I don't think that's how opposites work. Yeah, I I have a tweet thread about how opposite is a bullshit concept. <laughs> So I guess I have to vote for anything Kersey says. <laughs> a <laughs> yeah. the the dump the the dunk from the audience. And next, he's like, I want you to insult Kersey like that out loud. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Time to pick the one you like best. One of these is bad, that's all I'm saying. And the other one was by me. <laughs> yeah. Quiplash. Dude, look at those points. Wow, that's it for I'm still gonna lose. Time really flies, huh? Let's see your scores. Climbing. Oh, cheesecake and kiwi. Who was in last? Ari, were you in last? Soren's in last. Soren's in last. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this one's stupid. This one's hard. I agree. All right. Just one? I like it better than the old round three forms. By the way, if anyone is trying to get in audio chat and I miss you, just you gotta harass me in, in... Oh, I guess no one is. You gotta message me or just get my attention somehow. Because I, I sometimes forget to check the Discord. Maybe we should get you in here next round. I kind of agree with you, Peter Shoes, but if you play to the audience too much, then it's just like, all right, come on. Yee. 
Don't fuck up, Prester. Okay, let's do this. Just in the nick of time. Yeah. I hope I didn't get the order of them wrong. I may have accidentally put the witty question as the. Um, right, I'll, I'll get you an actually. audio mage. You gotta go in lobby. Oh, I simply did important. not care enough to try too hard right, on this. Well, it's voting time. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Call the cops to keep Kersey out of the private tickle club. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty messed up episode. I'm gonna agree with you there. It was a good try with the oboe there, Soren. <laughs> Scoop a few last minute points. Oh my god, podcast joke. <laughs> Surprises this. Who is my audience? Will I have an audience? Oh shit, I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> Oops. And so Kersey's podcast came to an end. <laughs> you know what? I'm so insulted. I'm shutting this down tonight. <laughs> That's it. I literally clicked Brusters, even though it's worse, by accident. I was trying to click click Aries. <laughs> it's better. <sighs> it how? how did mine win? Who well, among us has not wondered whose garage they had wandered into? And I'm not complaining, but mine was the worst one. <laughs> okay, choose your favorite. <laughs> These are both very good. Were they were they polite about it, Prince? A free Mason's garage, cool. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Thank you, audience. Thank you. Oh, the audience tilted in my favor. Three things you really thought we would have invented by now. <laughs> and now, pick your favorite. I don't know what a scissor statement is. I don't it's believe basically you. A, it, it. It's a highly divisive statement. It's, it's basically like... It's something that's Marmite, basically. Marmite. Yeah, What's you know what Marmite? It's, well, it's, it's a condiment, a highly divisive condiment. So it became shorthand in Britain for something that is highly divisive. All right, I'll vote for Obo. Always vote for Obo. A scissor statement is a statement that is perfectly crafted so that the answer seems completely obvious to anyone who reads it, except you can draw opposite conclusions by reading the statement. You and you are impossible, you are unable to ever see it from the other side because it's too obvious that your interpretation is correct. Okay, so it's just a bad sentence. Oh, it's an no. evil sentence. Got it. Winner's Kiwi. Damn, I got third place. Prester in second. second. Oh, we got some people in the lobby. Who we got in the lobby? Oh, we got a bunch of people in the lobby. All right, let's get. You. All right. Oh dear. Yolo. Let's get all those motherfuckers. Again, we'll try something else. If there's too many people in the lobby, I'm gonna start we'll kicking start people kicking. out. We gotta keep it controlled and high quality. What's up, guys? Welcome. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Ooh. There's so many people. All right, wait. Let's play a different game. All right. Um, we could switch to one of the ones that lets you play with up to ten. Sure. Or. Okay, let me see the Jackbox. Was that the game. other one? I need to look it up. I don't remember which one is up to 10. Um, push the button. Uh, uh, to join the chat, one must go into lobby and then be blessed by my choice to add them. Well, there's also Lie Swatter, which is up to 100 players, but it's like the least interesting and there is just pick one of the tens <laughs> all right now let me just double check how that game works and make sure it's not slamming around to learn a thousand things the the 110 game is too complicated we don't want to play that on the stream okay um i think bracketeering would be a good game so i'm going to switch to that Hell which yeah. is jackbox four cool so the stream's going down for a second okay this is exciting sorry you don't want to play bracketeering you hate it no, I'm very excited. I think I don't know what it is, but it sounds like a cool word. 
Great. Oh, we got a no <laughs> What were you saying, maybe? Oh, I haven't played this game before, so I'm excited. I've played most of the Jackbox games, but this one will be new to me. Hell yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I just need one minute to get it set up. How did this so, guy just end the stream? Unbelievable. I know, I'm the worst. I think you should, uh, make Cheesecake say something funny while we're waiting. Exactly do it on command. What do you think I am, a dog? Uh, I think you should flip that around. I think you're a comedy god. Here's a good cheesecake. Here's a good oh. cheesecake. Come on. Got a fit for you, cheesecake. Who's a good, who's a good girl? She's not your monkey. Throw your peanuts through the bar. <laughs> yeah, why do you do that to me, mage? You're so mean to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, cheesecake. Knock, knock. There. Amish. I'm a shoe. I didn't know you were a shoe. I'm a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I regret everything. That's good. You should. Presser, that's I like that. some of the best content I've ever had on the show. Right there. <laughs> well, thank All right, you. I'm, I'm streaming I, I, again. I, credit, I, I, w I will, if I have a credit to whoever came up with it, I, I wish I had, you know, it's rather good. Yeah. Fibby. You could have just so, taken credit. Somebody should mute have, you know. something. Somebody should mute something on their end or do pressure talk or something. Headphones. Great. Probably right. probably is my laptop making just wedding noises. So let me fix that. Yeah, the brop. Yeah, I'm probably, when it comes time for me to read, I'm probably going to have to use my phone. Okay. So hopefully. The... Um, how do I do push to talk? Uh, you gotta um, use you the settings. Go to ping, and then you select a key to... I'll Google it. Don't worry, I'll Google it. Alright, what do I tell... Oh, V-V-E-F. Cool. Well, yeah, this one's the up first to 16 players. Make so. mal lit. 16 players, holy fuck. Yeah. The first know. three names, three letter things almost make my name. Wait, what? what is this game? We're oh. gonna find out. It looks intense. Very vaporwave. It looks like we're gonna be in an 80s music video or something. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> someone's gotta put on some headphones or use push to talk, so I'm getting double audio. Hmm, I'm using push to talk, so it's not. Uh, hmm. Make Presto God Emperor of the stream. That's very flattering, you know. <laughs> um, I, 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 Unlike Caesar, I will not deny the crown. It's to me. <laughs> He's well, waiting in the wings. We all gotta stab Prester. That's what it comes to. You heard him. <laughs> uh oh, I and Robot's playing. Oh okay. my god. Or some or possibly an imitator. P possibly an yeah. we, we should remember. Just I mean, a reminder. He did, he did post about that he saw that I, I was on the stream. Oh cool. Well hello are you. Who would dare? I'll never <laughs> He also said something in the Twitch chat. I'll never tell. Oh, <laughs> hello Igan. So uh are we just waiting for more? Why don't we just pull the trigger? It doesn't look like anybody else is joining. No, nice let's chance. Do it. Let's do it. This is so chaotic. All right, whoever is the first one in needs to hit everybody's in. Or I can click it, I guess. No, I can't. Somebody else click it, please. I'm starting to get head no, foggy from, this, from all this cheesecake. We've like got it's going to be a tournament? That's to fun. We'll be posing some of what the hell is happening? Questions. Who knows? Warp speed. No oh. tournament. <laughs> and your votes Twitch. will determine which answer is advanced in the bracket. <laughs> As we whittle down to our championship Awesomest winner, grandma names in Nana. Okay. It's like a different structured version of Quiplash where you just come up with answers. Oh, it's a things. bracket. Right, so it's, like, it's like those bots at the Wikipedia pages in bracket. That for some reason has never had candy before. For that child's sake, I hope these answers are good. Okay. Type in the best answer you can think of and right. send. If your answer wins the entire bracket, you'll be rolling in cash. Oh, the chat's blocking the, way, the time. The oh, well. Use your imagination. And entering the room code. Best candy to give a child. Time's running out. Your answers are being paired off into one-on-one -on -one matchups. That means it's time to introduce ourselves to the prediction table. On your device, you'll see one of the upcoming matchups for this bracket. 
If you can predict it looks like potato. Let's increase the bit rate. All right, what? That's candy. <laughs> the predictions are in. It's time to dive into our first bracket. Thanks, Eric. You get points for confidence if you think that your own answer is going to get the most. Use your device to vote on which oh my goodness. Did you guys enter answers somewhere? You on your phone. You, oh my. Your vote. you gotta go to Jackbox. Oh, best candy. <laughs> I'll see you now. Oh. I, wait, I, I keep not clicking. It's so fast. So fucking fast, riddling. Good I'll job. Put down guys. the cheesecake you're eating for a second and just play the game. I'm trying to. I'm trying to focus. Help! <laughs> What's oh, a four character code? It's in the top left. So you just put in candy names? That's not how you win. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you just like, I don't know, M&M's. <laughs> we'll be more creative next turn. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Why don't we see what's going on on the other side of the bracket? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the spelling of Reese's. What are these things? I like the idea of Molly James. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, shoot. It's like, no a, it's like I, a honey candy. It's I, got I, I, honey caramel. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, that's a Mary Jane, yeah. I guess that's just a... Yeah, I, I, I got the name wrong. Mary Jane is what I meant. I, I, yeah, okay. Oh. Werther's. No Werther's is pretty good. Of... Yeah, Werther's is solid. Yeah. It's too bad nobody put it. Those. Everyone's just gonna vote for drugs. <laughs> Dude, Peanuts is hilarious. Pick Peanuts. I, it's not mine. Peanuts is funny. What if I used to know my favorite candy. They're so fun to do it. No it's lie. Here by the host. How did an actual candy win? Oh, so right, you're who trying to predict, predict that who will win? Get on to round two. It's time to make another prediction. You've got a new match. I don't even think my answer is on there. Thanks, Peter. That's a good image. The predictions are in. <laughs> Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. Everyone say thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, this is a tough one. No one thought it would be this close. Oh, these aren't the real numbers. Okay. Wait, now they are? I don't know. Nothing is real. That gave me goosebumps. <laughs> A rock reminds me of People just want to throw a rock at a child. I, I thought it was funny because it's kind of like a crack rock. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> mm. Super forecasters, we are not. Oh, we got a vote. What a strange game. <laughs> it's the price you pay for having a large number of people. Yeah. Human society can only go so large. We can definitely be funny. Close. I have faith in us. This was just the practice round. What's up, Egg? Welcome. Greetings. Now the final face-off. What is the best candy to give to that poor candy-deprived child? Or <laughs> <laughs> deprive the child of candy some more. This one's looking All right. Already. I'm just picturing a massive Fourth of July parade where I played a lot of typing. I played how I played Typing of the Dead. By the way, if anyone has a strong rec for a typing game, Oboe. <laughs> typing of the Dead, greatest typing. I played Typing of the Dead like a few years ago. Uh -huh. It's kind of hard. It is very hard. What That's about what one for a good. boomer that wanted to be better at typing and doesn't like games? 
Hmm. Arguing on Facebook. Yeah, they can do that without learning how to type. <laughs> All right, we got a long list here. I don't even think I'm on the list. Time for the blind bracket. We'll start with just Microsoft the Word. Icarus yeah, Proudbottom teaches teaches typing. Go Give ahead me. and write the first thing that comes to mind. We'll see the real bracket title after the answers are all in. How much time is left? Ten seconds. Okay, I'm gonna make Time's mine. Running out. <laughs> all right, this is yeah, funny. I, this is potentially. Have... What, what do they mean? We'll get. We'll learn the real bracket. Is it gonna be not? Is this the prompt gonna be something other than give a good piece of advice? Yeah, I don't know what the blind part the is. Call of Duty video game. Oh, they just give us the oh, wrong okay, prompt. Oh goodness. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even vote for my own. <laughs> this is this is a, that was a good prompt for this group. Of well, people. you're not voting for it yet. You're predicting what you think will win. Ah, ah. Has anyone answered different things for predictions and what you think should win? All of Duty, don't yeah. let me prompt with the unicorn. Well, that's probably stupid of me, isn't it? Your Call of Duty simply don't is pretty good. <laughs> Not a lot of Call of Duty fans in the crowd. <laughs> Somebody just got their milkshake drunk. So weird. <laughs> Someone got their milkshake. Drunk. Someone got slurped. <laughs> they were all pretty funny. Our next matchup. It's weird that this is my job. <laughs> um... <laughs> Ghost of Barry Goldwater is going to come get your show canceled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'll nuke it in front of your family. <laughs> that was for you, Vogel. <laughs> I lost my... I didn't even predict my, my own would win. You gotta have faith in yourself. Yeah. Okay. Funnier. <laughs> oh, God. Alright. I'll just vote with the group. I'll just do what the group likes. Glad you're having such a good time, Kersey. All I care about is the group. <laughs> it doesn't get any closer than that. Call of Duty, call your mother. That's kind of good. And you wholesome soul. Yeah. It's time to round out the bracket with this. <laughs> Extremely disrespectful to Call of Duty. Here come the votes. <laughs> Call of Duty. No Neither a borrower nor a lender be. These are all funny. Ah. It's a nail biter. <laughs> there you go. There Call you go. of Duty to thine own self be true. <laughs> Eigen voted for Egg That's confirming <laughs> The righteousness of his kingly rule mm -hmm. He knew He knew what the people he, would want He predicted Egg, yeah He predicted <laughs> The predictions are in Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. It's true, Call of Duty's not that good. I really guys. like Call of Duty. We don't. <laughs> but what about Call of Duty, don't be a bitch, vote Goldwater? Meh. Eh? <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Call of Duty, simply don't. See, I tried to have faith in myself that time, and I lost again. You should learn a lesson from that. Yeah. yeah. I'm learning two opposed lessons that cancel each other out. All right. Call your mother, eh? Send me to bed 
for that supper, we have a winner! Good. You're a good son. And now the defender... <sighs> Damn. The best subtitle for the next Call of Duty video game. I just tweeted that screenshot. <laughs> Damn, dude. This is great, too. Oh, it's so close. Is that true? Is this fake? Are they phasing us out? Can there even be that many? It's a 16 player game. Are there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, audience can do it, I guess. Oh, audience votes. I'm surprised. I thought Egg would go all the way. I voted for Egg. It was an exceptional answer. Back to that scoreboard. Mm-hmm. Oboe. Unknown Oboe. Oh, yeah. This is the same scoreboard. I'm number five. Cheese is number 13. Good job, Cheese. I love the unlucky number. For the triple blind bracket. This bracket See ya, Igan. Say hello to baby. Round. If you will. Bye, yes. Have a good evening. Bye. Write any two words and place and or ampersand between them. Okay. Who knows what crazy twists and turns this bracket will take? Submitted. Time's running out. Ampersand and ampersand. And and ampersand. Amper and sand. Sorry. Cutest title for a Saturday morning cartoon show. Time to get And per se and what it originally meant, mm. but then it got corrupted into ampersand. All cash is double this round, so make these <laughs> crime and punishment. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna have to wait for full duration because I can ditched us. Oh, time's running out. That bastard. That's what they say. Don't hitch your wagon to a robot shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Device, really. Oh, there's no way to push it forward. Oh well. Time's up at the prediction table. It's go time. <laughs> Can someone explain Booba and Kiki to me? I never have understood that. Yeah, I actually wrote a poem, which can explain it. So if you'll give me a second, I can find it. <laughs> I would oh, love Mr. to see your poem. I think we need a reading. I'm going to vote f for the one that's not going to win. Booba and Kiki. Boobas aren't Kikis, and Kikis aren't Boobas. That's all you need to know. Yeah. But, but I know I'm being fucked with now. You can really, you can really, you can just listen to the words and you kind of get the, yeah. the point. Okay, here we go. I found it. Kikilti Poopilti, Kiki and Booba are both quite nonsensical, yet they reveal contours of words as they're perceived by human minds. Even these abstract things can seem quite real. <laughs> Fantastic that double dactyling. Cool. Alright, is that the whole idea? Yeah. Sounds round and Kiki sounds pointy. Exactly. Oh. Okay. And people in different cultures recognize, like, label the sharp things as Kiki. Oh, is it like a. Have, have there been studies? Yeah, that's yeah. where it came from. They did science on it? Oh, Always a guy science, that yeah. the They did science on the words. No, oh, I guess it's <laughs> true. What's happening over on the other side of the bracket. Anyhow, while I'm, while I'm in the business of shapeless information, mm -hmm. I also made something else which really explains the concept pretty well. If I do say so myself, let me link it in the chat. I would watch Saturday Morning Crime and Punishment. Decisive victory! <laughs> But Tony uh, and Tweedledum are creepy. Yeah. yeah. Which one's creepier? Oh wait, we got... Oh. <laughs> Hello, Cather Wall. Can you just have a first in the card? lobby for like 15 minutes. I, I didn't know. I just... Uh, someone didn't... Nobody said. <laughs> you, you dissing my wife, Kersey? I'm just stating that nobody I, said. I don't think he was. <laughs> I'm simply stating that nobody said. <laughs> Funkadelic and licentious. What the fuck? I don't know. 
It's got good. It's juicy though. I predicted it would win. <laughs> there you go. Somebody's clicking. No, do not you dare explain Greeble versus Degreeble. Well, just click the link. Click the link. It explains both Greebles and Ungreeble. Huh? Greebles and Ungreebles and Kiki and Booba. Now I know. Uh, I know what people are gonna vote for. I'm not lugubrious. Okay. How dare you? Disconsolate, maybe, but never lugubrious. Soren's in lobby. Oh, and I'm FG. Come on in, drop out. Somebody's clicking. Whoever's clicking. Quit your, quit your damn clipping. Clicking. Yeah, I'm oboe. Oboe. Wait, I hear myself. I'm muting somebody. It's drop -o, yeah. Oh yeah, drop -o, Get on some headphones. Or push it up. Now, actually think about a, a truck stop. Curzy and Chill would be a pretty weird <laughs> truck stop. I know you guys you like the meme great, boys. You'd make a great lot lizard, though, Curzy. I mean, I'm just, just, just a name like Curzy. You'd be like, like a real creep. I'll sit in your like passenger that. seat and we yeah. can just talk while you drive around. And just Curzy and Chill. Tap as fast well, as you can? Tapping. I didn't Tap even think of that. Oh, fuck. I... Dude, Damn it. That was all me. That swear. was all me. I could definitely oh, drive a truck. Nice. Eris, yes, Droppo from the movie. Oh, yeah. Who, who the fuck is clicking? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Damn it. I lost. <laughs> Why are you swearing so much, Ares? <laughs> what happened? Oh my god. I wish they'd uh, tell I can't us like, by you how people. much. Oh, by how much how the many clicks work? Yeah, I agree. Simply because. Egg is in the lobby. Join. Oh, here we go. Uh oh. Hello, Egg. Egg. Hello, Egg. 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 Hi, friend. <laughs> this is weird. Oh, no. <laughs> These are weird. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> As we finish out your season finale, I cool, haven't I voted. Guess. I haven't voted. This right. show is like death. <laughs> except yeah, it that's never right. really ends. All right. Well, I think he's more of like the St. Peter at the gates, and then you go into chill in heaven. That's yeah. Oh, cool. That's pretty good. That's a positive spin. <laughs> Thank you. Is pre Prester? Are you winning, Prester? I'm Prester. Apparently, I am. What do you think about Oh. Obo, P, and uh, Prester. How the heck? Well, good job, squad. On number nine, how'd cheesecake turn out? Real bad. I don't know. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> We're not on screen I kinda yet. I kind of forgot to put 13. an answer. And then Eigen, who oh, yeah, wasn't playing. Do it. He o <laughs> yeah, she only I'm... beat uh, the person who dropped out. So. Yeah, because right. um, I forgot to hit the submit button both times. Do we want to oh. do this one again or do a different cool. game? Let's not do this one again. Okay. Cheesecake, what are you feeling? So we could do more um, Dropbox or whatever this shit's called, or we could... <laughs> we haven't oh. done Drop the Dropbox, Dropbox game, game yet, but Let's it is only Let's go upload all of our files and then download them again. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like fun. <laughs> so, we, so, so as I was saying, Cheesecake, we could play more Dropbox, or we could um, do, fly around in Flight Sim and talk about stuff. Do you have a, a preference? Particularly, whatever and everyone, everyone in the chat wants to do. All right, how do we vote? By yelling. By yelling. Oh yeah, just so write, that. write Jack or Plane, and then we'll just get a feel for how many people want Jack and Plane. All right, just tap the Twitch emotes as fast I'm as see, you can. I've seen a lot of Jack. I've seen some planes. I've seen some planes. I've seen some planes. Plane. Seen, oh, I does not help if you anymore. say it multiple times. That makes it harder. But I do uh, redeemed a highlighted message for plane. 
I'm seeing a lot of planes. Hmm. Sir Freebird seems to be canceling out his own vote. Oh, you can start a poll in uh, Twitch if you really want to. Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Wait, let's do and that. And also, I would suggest allowing people to vote extra by spending all their points. Oh, but what does that do? Uh, people spend 10,000 yeah. points to throw the... Oh, to, like, uh, charge money? In some future... In some... It's fake money. But it's real money. No, it's fake money. You get it by just watching your channel. All right. You can buy it with real money, but you also get it with just watching. All right. Well, I can't tell if it's a grift. You can really or not. buy channel points. All right. Fine. Uh, fuck I, don't know. It. I made that up. Fine. Everyone fuck it. Who's used points has voted for planes. So. All right. Ready? Go. Start poll. Whatever. I mean, just don't do, don't spend money on dumb shit like Twitch points if you don't want to. Like, all right. Yeah, no, no, you... <laughs> this is cool. I like this. I like that I can see this. This is fascinating that they have this baked in. I feel like I'm learning shit. A lot of votes for Dropbox. Yeah, just got some cool but stuff. everyone was saying I plain. See the voting. Where is it? It's in chat well, at the top. Oh, see it. It's, it's equalizing. Stuck. Or it could be revealing that the, the mm. poll lowers barrier to entry to the unfairly oh, discriminated uh, voting right. public. Right. I want to I want to upload files. I want to upload files. I got 15,000 <laughs> points. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm spending all 14,000 Just spending your points at Dropbox? Wait, you see, yeah, there's a button for, like, vote with 10 points and vote with 200 points? Uh, the 10, 10 like points cost vote. money. Eris, how are you cheating? The 200 points are free. Oh my god, alright. Well, plane won. Howdy heck. Now, Landed. here's the question. Woo! Here's the question is whether this is a democracy. And I think it's not. <laughs> I don't think it is. Okay, is there a very short game? That's true. I think so. Oh, a short game? Yeah, what's an oligarchy? Obviously. I mean, um, like Quiplash. We could do an older version of Quiplash that doesn't have the three. Let's do the murder one. I like the murder one. Okay, we'll do the murder one. That All one's right. decent. All right, guys. The, the vote was purely a visual simulation in order to test the voting function, which isn't something I said before. <laughs> I like that, Eris. This is feeling like a real government. <laughs> yeah. I, that I, I dropped like ten thousand points into that. That made me feel real good. Did you actually? It was do all it? real. Oh, wait, I tried to drop a lot of points, but it wouldn't allow me to vote. It buffers for like 10 seconds every time. If, <laughs> if anyone is going in, into debt on their points, um, you're an idiot. So don't do that. I don't know. Don't spend money on points. Yeah, that's how it rolls. The quality's in the better this time. Oligarchy. <laughs> fair election, fairly ignored. Thank you, Braytree. I just want to rig a guitar in an election. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> I feel like we did good here. All right, so remember, we can only do eight people. Eight people, okay. Given that we can only do eight people, if you feel like you've been in a lot and or someone hasn't been in, if you've been in before, wait a second. But I don't, I don't know. Just wait a second before getting in. Okay. Oh. Unless you're cheesecake. So what is this? Do we have a code for this one? I got. Yeah, I'll bet a second. Uh, cheesecake. Sweat. This is. Sweat. This is a murder game. Oh dear. I played it last time. I'll sit out and let someone take this spot. Leverage yeah, twist yeah. point account. I just want Mushroom to get to play. Yeah, Mushroom, get in there. One more. I think I think it is in. I'm in two. Okay, we got everybody. Uh, you can still join the audience, though, even if you're not one of the base eight. You can still put the code in. You'll just be in the audience. You still have influence yeah. over the game. I will audit. <clears throat> I'm a Vogel. If you're in, though, you're in. Victory fell last time. Look at us, just sitting there. Yeah, we're sitting here. next to each other. We're friends. All right, th then Cheesecake will take a little a flight. The murder hotel. Prince, how did you do this? Prince, just find the, the most nearby person who is also watching my show and get them to do it. Do. Get Beast on. Where's Beast? Yeah, where's Beast? I, I think we'll get him later. I don't know if I should have eaten all this cheesecake. Seriously, though, I'm like, like a little. This is your wake up call. Prepare to die. Welcome to Trivia Murder Party. I flooded the roads myself to strand you here in a fight for your life. Only one of you will survive. 
Also, someone took a number two in the pool, and I am not happy about having to clean that up. Okay. Oh. First question. Oops. Okay. When was Velcro patented? Use your device to answer the question. Did we lose somebody? That means you really um. have this too. Time for the stop. Yeah, this is where I'm streaming from. I'm streaming from this hotel. I was just, I would get Peter Shoes the in there. Is, who got oh, they the used like the same uh, carpet that they used in The Shining. Oh yeah. The rest of How did I get that wrong? Oh, wow, that was, that was a rough first yeah, question. Almost everyone Jeez. fucking died. Jesus. Yeah, I, I think it was invented by NASA for space, oh, which is why I got going it. To get it yet. Well, it's got a very 50s vibe. If you like. Welcome, Vogel. Throw on some headphones. These are precious family treasures. Or use push to talk. Punishments. Pick a box and keep what's inside. Can you hear me? Avoid the ones yeah, dude. I can hear you. Damn, Eris letting me have it. Hurry up and grab a weird gross box. Apparently I'm not allowed to choose one. Okay. We all got money uh -oh. and Peter she's got a hat. hat. Dad, you're back! Now I can finally get closure. Yeah, but people went hiking Deadly before closure. 1955. I think you're just showing off. Who what does Velcro have to do with hiking? Who will die? Maybe the audience. Hey, audience. I hope you all die, too. Thanks. Hot tip. You can join the audience at any time. I feel like I'm disproportionately wealthy for getting one question right. Yeah. Let's try another one. You're a very special boy. What color are yeah, Kelly's magic good. slippers in the original book version of The Wizard of Oz? Oh my god, the book? That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Better not be different than the movie. I'll be mad. I bet it is. Yeah, it probably is. It'd be crazy. <laughs> the fuck? Oh my god, is that oh. You people. You people. Yeah, because the reason they yeah, changed geez. it was, was, was so that they could take full yeah. back yeah. color. Because silver slippers wouldn't have stood out as much in color. Huh. Yeah. They were like, we got color. Let's, uh, let's make them red. Every day is a school day. Donation time. You all get five hundred dollars. We've all read it. <laughs> yeah, free silver. I, I think I've heard that actually. The person with the Brian was all over that. Will die. But if you give to someone and they have a thousand dollars or more, I will kill you instead. I can never understand the, the. I'm not even in. Oh no, I am in. Yeah, you are. Welcome, to this Welcome Mystic JG. Thanks for the follow. Hurry up. I gave to Vogel. Time for fiscal oh, revelations. Vogel. I think we're dead. Now Vogel's dead. Uh-oh. If you're overfunded, you're safe. No, no. But you <laughs> spent your money unwisely. Shit. <laughs> Get wrecked. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vogel. <laughs> Surprise! Hey, you guys gave now. me the money. It's Keep not my fault. You just might steal someone else's life It's a big leg, huh? Game. I'm cheering for the mushroom. Let's keep moving. Okay, guys, let's try to be mature about this next one. Cash money. What is a fungal disease that attacks corn? Huh. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Mon Mage. Some of, these Mon answers, Mage. some of these answers have $100 question on who wants to be a millionaire vibes. Uh huh. Almost out of time. And they're all fucking weird. Horns all... and everything we eat, it's incumbent on us to know. This. I got it wrong. Oh, oh yeah, you, cheesecake. No, no, cheesecake got it. Incumbent. I knew it. Oh, yeah, I, I met a game Well, yeah, I live in the Midwest. I'm terrible at these questions. Of course I know this. I'm also we technically in the Midwest. In the Midwest. Best time zone. Hmm. Best time zone, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, this one's oh, good. Geez, you're in Eastern, aren't you? 
I'm giving yeah. each of you a telephone. Not the best I time. I only have three phone numbers. Not, not the even the best time zone. Dial one of these not even counting the Midwest. Literally has Eastern in the name. Or you die. You're so mean to me. You should be thankful I'm not making you pay for this call with quarters. He's jealous that you're in the better time zone. He is. He's always been jealous that I'm in the better time zone. Hmm? Oh, is it a rotary phone? <laughs> I'm not. Oh fuck me! Right. Drogo, you gotta press the button. <laughs> I'm not on my oh, phone. No. I'm not on my phone, and it's not working. I. It, what do you want? A laptop or something? You? Huh? Yeah. So I'm fucked. Time's almost done. Oh, major fuck up. Have you never seen a rotary phone before? Yeah, it can be real hard to figure out how a phone works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that world, Peter. Wheat smut. <laughs> Wheat porn. That's my fanfic. <laughs> We're here. When one player is left alive, we'll go Next to the round. Next question. Mu mushroom smut. Which of these is a lizard? Which of these is a lizard? Which of these is a lizard? They're toads. So easy, Cruzy. Gosh. Lizard. <laughs> Time's running out. Who picked this? That was me. I got it. Shucks. I should have thought back to my Oh Brother Where Art Thou days. Trap, yeah. Oh my god, I got it again. Time for consequences. Horn toad. You can shoot blood from Horny their eyes. toads. Let's do a yeah, we, we have them in my neck of the woods. They're very charming animals. Oh, hey, look. The ghost of my Aunt Mildred is writing on this mirror. Pay attention to her unique handwriting. Now, Aunt Mildred is going to write a different word. But so will everyone else. Draw a word on the mirror to camouflage Aunt Mildred's. Let the drawing begin. Watch closely. Oh, the audience doesn't get to draw. A word written by mm. Aunt Mildred's ghost. So many convincing words to choose from. Now, type the word that Aunt Mildred wrote, or you die. So obvious. <laughs> Would the real Aunt Mildred please stand up? Yeah. Looks like there's no fooling you. Aren't you special? Haha! <laughs> you know I will never die. He's still alive, dude. Just yeah, I think he's the last one. That hat has to leave the game. You have a will on your controller right now, and you have a few seconds to leave it to someone who really deserves it. But you gotta do it fast. I deserve what, it. What is up with this hat? I've never seen this before. That you got from okay. the gift in round one. Somebody wrote a will before they died. They left a cherished possession to you. It's your problem. Aww. Aww. I get the hat. Yay. Thank you. You love cheesecake. Let's try another one. What's the official name of that stick conductors wave around to lead an orchestra? Oh, come on. Um. It's clearly well. Music stick. Music stick. It's music stick. Quick music stick. It's music stick. Music stick. Music stick. It's music stick. I couldn't hear you. What? What you oh, it's baton. <laughs> Everyone got it. To acknowledge a reality where you're right, father. I thought it was music stick. I misclicked baton. I thought it was music stick. It's loser wheel time. Loser wheel. Oh dear, what does that mean? Spin it. I predicted no one would die. I'm predicting I no one will die. That's just icing on the death Same cake. cheesecake. Boiled boil. That's oh. still satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
Show's over, guys. It's okay, I'm still alive. No one cares. <laughs> yeah, wait, why did Cheesecake have to do the Wheel of Death and not... She had the hat. Oh, oh it's the evil hat. Oh, you're so oh. mean. But it's pretty. Oh, yeah, I look pretty damn cute just with that hat. But will you be the one to escape? I'm going to give you a category. Crayola crayon colors. Let's see the right answers. Whoops. You advance one oh. space for every correct answer. Macaroni and cheese is a pretty silly crayon color. Yeah. You're a little bit I don't blame you. Escaping. I would have Oh, wait. Been. Did you think it was going to be just you? Oh, that's cute. So wait, is the audience you, racing too? Force, I don't know. Game. Here's no, no, no. everyone's next question, and they get a third chance to help them catch up to you. All right. Oh, apostles. Time is almost up. <laughs> Cheesecake, you got something wrong. <laughs> Never married. Make that disappear. Uh, I don't fucking know. Hmm. Hmm. Yikes! There's a good, good, good ghost right behind you. Wait for me, Peter. Canadian national holiday. Chat disappeared briefly. Canadian. <laughs> so I heard you guys like Canadian trivia. Love it. I'll sell my <laughs> answers. Just to hear that briefly. Uh oh, here comes trouble. Who's on the bottom? The audience is it's doing so well. Is it the audience? Yeah. <laughs> Which of these has an exoskeleton? Um, depends how you oh. define it, I guess. Time is almost well, up. Don't think it particularly does. <laughs> if they say snail has, that's I bullshit. Mean, what? That's okay, bullshit. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? That's bullshit. That's, okay, I guess you're right. It depends whether you have a bullshit definition of exoskeleton. Yeah, that's bullshit. It, it, it's, it's certified bullmania. Yeah. <laughs> I might have gotten this wrong. I don't even understand this question. Is that an, a formal thing? Yeah, it's a thing. It's a it's a book. Okay. Oh, oh, I thought it was just like asking you which of these are spooky stories. Okay, I, I don't look all that. Nah, it's a specific book. Eggs in, in the last. <laughs> I was so sure the monkey ball was one. Who the frick? Yeah. Probably <laughs> Boom Boom Bikini. Crush on a net Funicello. Is that from like the 1800s what kind of or something? What question is this? I literally wrote it for. Was... The only wrong ones. She was part of the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I mean, possibly like the main <laughs> mouse <here>. Oh, <laughs> of course. Old retired. Dairy products. That first one is not a real thing. But are you just fucking with us? I bet it's a dairy product anyway. What the fuck, dude? Clabber? What in the what in the tarnation is Clabber? Oh, no. oh my god. Boom! <laughs> Clabber. Clabber. I don't know about Clabber. Not Crap. So Clabber, yeah, whose eyes so are a cannibal dynamo. The audience is hanging and in there. And that includes the third answer choice now, too. Not the last one. American dollar's not real. <laughs> Soured milk. Only Bitcoin is real. Yeah. Bullshit. Well, according to Kanye, you have to get all the right answers to escape. You can't get out unless you get it perfect for round. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna die. None of these feel like. Yeah, this seems fake. Things to me. Ugh. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew that? Mage knew that. <laughs> Was that mage. generation Wait, like a, really? sounds like a generic mage. Wait, what was, was the answer there? Oh, no. They like the green new one, right? How about... Peter and the wolf? <laughs> Peter and the werewolf. But what if Peter hadn't caught the werewolf? What then? Hmm? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. cheesecake oh one. Cheesecake one. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the audi <laughs> audience was like half a step behind you. We got oh, we got good. three points there. Good job. Yeah, I'm proud of you, fellow audience members. Yeah, you, damn. You were a great team. Good job, audience. You killed it. Thanks. Oh, congrats. She cheesecake survives. Oh, and Carrying forty one thousand, forty one hundred dollars in cash. Work cheesecake. That's a nice little <laughs> bonus. All right. All right, well done. Killing Team. the stream. I'm I'm well and thoroughly wiped out. We're gonna chat for a bit. We're, we're gonna do a little flight, and then we're gonna do story time. Cheesecake, do you feel safe with this man? I mean, yes. All right, then I'm going to leave voice chat. <laughs> Okay. Good luck. Oh my gosh. Okay, Good bye. You. <laughs> Cheesecake's own alt is leaving her alone. Yeah, how yeah. dare you? Cheesecake's there being be like... Or how dare I? <laughs> doing ventriloquism. Yeah, how dare I? Alright, Oh, but you just... Kid. Oh, but you just... Alright, let's drag and drop these MFs. Out. Oh no, I lost Cheesecake. Sorry, Cheesecake, I didn't mean to... Oh, shit. Cheesecake, I didn't mean to remove you. Hmm. <laughs> you don't mean to me. Banishing your own guest. <laughs> Banishing my own guest. All right, we're good. We're on. Let me find my fucking music. There we go. Chill station. And, uh... uh, uh, uh there we go. Excellent. All right, cheesecake. Are you there, cheesecake? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Um, where do you want to fly in the world? We'll do a quick flight, and then we'll do some story time. Oh, I don't care. Does the audience have any opinions about where we should fly? Audience, Japan. We've done some. We've done some Japan. I would do Japan. Japan's cool. It's a good. It's a good Himalayas. That's interesting. Disneyland. Interesting. We Perry. I don't know what that is. Korea. Disney. We're going to Andorra. Okay. What's Andorra? It's just the place that we all changed our location to for a while one time. All right. Let's go to fucking Andorra. Um. Oh, it's in Italy? Does it sound right? No opinion on that matter? Not in Italy. Oh, it's Spanish? L-E-U looks like the right code. It's about this. It's its own country, between France and Spain. Owned by the government of Catalonia is what it says. Oh, the microstate of Andorra. Okay, so we're gonna go to L E U. Seo de Urgel. Yep, yeah, that's the one. There it fucking is. What a strange place. What well, what kind of plane do you want to fly, Cheesecake? You know. Do you want a big plane or a little plane? A little plane. Okay, and do you want a fighter jet or do you want like a really small meme plane? Find the goofiest one you can. The goofiest plane, let me look. I think it might be like one of these. This CTSL shit's pretty weird, or this the Icon A5 is quite weird. Um, All right. This blue one's kind of weird. Let's go with the icon. We're gonna go with the icon. It's a, just such a pain in the ass to fly, but it doesn't matter. We'll only be flying for a bit. <laughs> 180 square miles. It does seem to have an airport. Half ruled by the president of France and half by the bishop of Urgell. Did you know that, Cheesecake? I did not. Um... Cheesecake, have you been uh, knitting much lately? Um, just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but yeah, some. 
Have you knitted my scarf yet? No, I still have to go to the yarn store. I okay. will let you know when I have gone to the yarn store because I will be sending you pictures of the yarn. All right, good. You, you ever have you ever thought? Sorry, I you, you can block any of these questions. Have you ever thought of starting a weaving business or a knitting I business? I have, but you know, I kind of don't want to do that. Seems like a lot of work. Yeah, that's true. Be a lot of knitting. My favorite Andorran is Solar Monkey. It's the Solar Monkey lore. They're from Andorra. And Amalek asks, is it a spaghetti scarf? Maybe it should be. <laughs> I would I would appreciate a spaghetti scarf. Alright, um... Were you there for the spaghetti knitting? I wasn't there for it, literally, but I was there for it in spirit. Good. Look at this weird-ass plane. It's strange. I love it. It's got like... I like its weird little propeller in the back. Yeah. That is fucking weird. Um, look at these. We got the flaps can change. You know, and get some flap stuff happening. And wow. then... That's fun. And then, uh, let's take off. See if I can even take this thing off. Take off in this thing, rather. Oh, yeah, I've got the flaps control. Cool, cool, cool. Picking up a little speed. And look out the window. See Andorra. Wow. See Andorra. Oh, was, was that animals? Oh, no, those were just little boxes. We're going a little bit off track here. Oh, we are taking flight. Easy as pie. Easy as cheesecake. Easy as cheesecake. It did look like animals, Eris. Hey, this place is kind of cool, actually. Look at this. Pretty. It's all, uh, it's very hilly and stuff. Mountainous. Yeah. I actually like it a lot. I'm actually surprised at how good this looks. Wait, this. Let's go. I want to go down into this valley and hopefully not crash. Uh, let's put the flaps away. Put the wheels up. You can see the wheels going up. I like this valley. It's a cheese of cake. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay, cheesecake. Yes. So, oh yeah, audience. So, hello, audience. Um, what did Egg do? Chat told me to shut up. He's threatening to leave. Don't leave, Egg. I'll miss you. <laughs> Cheese is in charge. Yes. I don't make the rules here. I just fly the plane. This place is quite cool, though. I do like it. Um, okay, so audience, we were going to go with this format where I'm going to ask Cheesecake a question, and then Cheesecake is going to ask me a question. Or you can go first, Cheesecake, if you want. So I don't have a whole lot of questions. You don't have a whole lot of questions. So that means I should mm -hmm. go first. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, cheesecake. I want to know... Okay, so... How do I ask this question? Like... Are you good at memes? Yes. Why are you good at memes? Um, just generalized persistence and the force of such a bizarre and honestly, it's kind of stupid profile picture uh, <laughs> has led to um, people just being very interested in like the stupid things I have to say. Wait, what was your answer? You you. You said force of will and your profile picture is your answer? Essentially, yes. I just am very persistent. So, uh-huh. Uh, I mean, the oboe and the greebles, it just happened because I kept doing it. It's nothing really special about what I'm saying. It's just the fact that I keep doing it without explanation. Okay, so would you say that if anyone wants to be good at memes, the main 
um, <laughs> the main quality they need is persistence. Persistence <laughs> and just do things without really a clear explanation of what it is that you're doing. Illegibility. Just a little bit, yes. Just a little bit. Oh, I'm trying to figure out where to fly. Let's just keep going along this river thing, I guess. I don't know. Where should we fly to? I don't know. Uh, let's just keep going along the river thing. Alright, let's go on the river thing. Look at this weird-ass plane. I love it. Yeah, it's quite bizarre. Um, let's put the trim up a little bit. Being likable is important. I don't know if I'd... Soren says if you want to force a meme, you have to be loved by your audience. Sort of true, I think. Cheesecake, how can I be loved by my audience in the way that you are? Um, well, I'm not entirely sure why I'm loved by my audience as much as I am. Uh, I just kind of try to be nice. Be nice? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Be nice, yes. Hey, shut the fuck up, chat. Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophers posting their L's on Twitch. Turn into a cute cat. That's an interesting idea. I would never do that. When we'll have Alice turn you into a cat girl yet. Mm, mm. Uh, Vogel Frey has a question for Cheesecake, which is, would you rather be loved or feared? I'd rather be loved, because if people feared me, then I guess... Um, at any point, their fear could become so great that they <laughs> intend to take me out before I can do any more harm. <laughs> to take you out? <laughs> <laughs> so well. would you? So would you say that you are um, that you have a sharp political scheming mind, avoiding such bad outcomes as being taken out? Well, it's not that. <laughs> it's just I like to avoid bad outcomes in general. Oh, well, that's wise. Can't argue with that. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of talking about cat ears and yes, tail. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Vocal Vocal saying some bullshit. Multi says being likable and loved is strictly better than being unlikable or feared for sure. But I mean it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, cheesecake. Your 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 profile picture is a cat. What did you think it was? Take a look here. Yeah, I guess I thought it was a cat. <laughs> Someone says that's no ferret. Yes, it's a fucking cat. The boots are fire. <laughs> All right, let's let's make this. Ew, little... I think they're like Balenciaga or something. I just looked up stupid boot and it was the first. <laughs> stupid boot. Did you literally Google <laughs> stupid boot? I think it was... I think I googled fancy boot, but it might have been stupid. <laughs> it might have. Yeah. I wait. No. <laughs> wait. So on this topic, cheesecake. What is the um? everyday carry of your cat. So we got the Balenciaga stupid boot. The black tie. Um, usually she has a Rolex on, but you can't really see it because the gun is um, right. obscuring that. Right. Uh, and the Greeble wand that the Srivaka um, made in, like pixel art. <laughs> Oh, Srivaka made the, the green one. I love it. And then, of course, we I have here this uh, this clarinet, it looks right like. Now. It's an oboe. Don't call it a clarinet. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> I'm going to put you back to normal size. Everyday carry. <laughs> Eris, this is the end of season two. We are on the, we are on the cutting edge of the second... And the end of the second... Uh, season. The seasons are ten episodes long. You know. Or is he dragging us back into 20... How am I dragging us back into 2020? Dude, Chad is going ape shit right now. 
it's because I'm such a great guest. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it was Lithros. Lithros is the one who put the ovo in the in the cat's hand. Wait, so hold on. You were originally trying to see if you would get ban like banned or muted or like throttled um, for yeah, saying Oboe? Yeah, I was wondering, can I get suspended for spamming Oboe? And then I spammed Oboe in the replies, like, I think 150 times at least. Yeah. Um, but I haven't, I haven't counted that. Um, but I'm not allowed to tweet the word Oboe anymore. Like, I'm not allowed to tweet with just the word Oboe. That's, I've been forbidden. And when you say for, you've been forbidden. Is that yes. a personal forbiddenness? No, it is. Twitter won't let me do it. It I'm literally won't let you. I'm being repressed. <laughs> is Vekinen in here? Someone said Vekinen's name. I don't Twi know. <laughs> Twitter has taken her oboe. Yeah. <laughs> and it's heartbreaking. Um, and how are you coping with that? I don't know. I'm, I'm on, I'm coping. This is my crisis. My crisis is being on your Twitch. Right. This is this is you acting out. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Got it. God, well, with roast, the problem is I don't actually cook up the memes. Um, it's more of a split second decision of what I decide to do. Time isn't real. How is it Wednesday? Wait, Ari, you have a podcast? Moth.site This is a fake website. <laughs> we all have podcasts. Um... Okay, wait, so now it's your turn to ask me a question. If you want to. Yeah. Um, so, you decided to be a name and face account on a corner of Twitter that is almost exclusively Anons. How has that affected your experience? Like, why did you choose to do that? Okay, this is a good question. Bonk, Lithros, bonk. Um, that's a good question. And uh, I'm going to give you my fake answer before I give you my real answer. The fake answer... Okay. I don't know how to give an, a good answer to this question. God, that just, means the question is good. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. I guess whenever I try to do an alt, I feel weird. Whenever I try to not post under my actual self, I feel weird. That's part of my. That's part of my answer. You recall when I was being the sun face? Yes, I do. And I kind of lost my shit. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, I was actually feeling kind of manic. Like for real, I was feeling kind of fucking manic. And that's not really. Thank you, Prester Timius, Timaeus. Um, I felt like a good son. There was something weird about it. I, I felt, like, hyped up, but, like, a little bit, like, uh, you know what I'm talking? Like, it was a little bit extreme. And yes. it had the mask power. Why? Part of it is because I want to... Let me think, let me think of, like, a better answer to your question. Well, why are you asking that question? Like, what's the question behind the question? Oh, I'm just trying to think of questions to bother you with. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so how'd you do? I don't know. I think I did pretty well. You seemed pretty confused. Yeah, Egg, Egg says, Curzy, we feel the same. It's just all the time and it's cozy instead of ugh. It's true. Don't you feel a little weird? Here, uh, let me turn it back around. Oh, wait, Egg, can I turn this back around on you? Dead silence. I said yes. Oh, you said yes. You just got clipped. I like doing yep. these really rapid camera swaps. Ooh, ooh. Never done that before. Ooh, 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 ooh. Pretty. Ooh, ooh. Um, don't you feel like you're leaving something out when you don't face post? 
don't you feel like you're kind of doing this just so, it's like leaving something out you know what i mean it's it's an intentional leaving something out because i feel like if i was just a face um all of the preconceived notions that everyone has about just any sort of face at all mm. um sort of limits you and it it ties you to your real self so you're not really allowed to post as insane um as i generally do that's true um it would just feel like i was insane and not the pink cat was insane right yeah i yeah that's interesting i have an alt it's not that good i have a kind of bad alt do you know my alt don't yes. don't don't dox me it's kind of bad i'm not going to tell your alt <laughs> Don't dox me, cheesecake. Um, I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, but it, but don't do it. Um, it's okay. It's a good battle. My alt is just... It's basically like... Pretty dyspeptic. Is that a word? Is that a good word? Yes. My alt's pretty dyspeptic. My alt is just... My alt is like my incel self. My alt is like my, like... I don't give a fuck about anything. I'm not going to... I don't know. Maybe I put all my positivity into my face self on Twitter. And it leaves behind the shell of weirdness. You know what I mean? Yes. So, that's a, that's a thought. Maybe says that's relatable. Thank you for being the only person in chat not roasting me, maybe. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Eris said a nice thing as well. That my alt was okay. <laughs> That's honestly the highest compliment I think you could ever receive from Eris. Yeah. Kiwi's not, not roasting me, just trying to turn me into a cat boy or cat girl or something. My weirdness and meanness and grumpiness all goes to my alt. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try to go over these mountains and not run into them. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of demand for cat person me. I don't know about a golden brown. Oh, I see the roasting. I get it. Catboy Kersey, Catboy Kersey. <laughs> How about Cat Man? Why are there no Cat Men? That's my question. What would a Cat there's Man just, be like? They're just grouped under Catboy. Grouped think. under Catboy. That's bullshit. By the way, look at this fucking um, beautiful little high altitude lake that we're about to go over. Secluded. High altitude lake in Andorra. That is, this is quite something. Look at that. You could, uh, you could hang. Oh, do zoomed in too far. You could hang out at this lake. Yeah, that'd be neat. Um, Dancing Horse Sixteen. Uh, using the cat instead of a face does make me more like a performer, and it is very much a stage persona. There are several market differences. I actually made a list of this once. Mm. Um, I think I still have it somewhere. But yeah, it's very different. Okay, wait. So you, but you do have the thoughts thoughts on the anonymity thing. This is something we mentioned. Yeah, Having a few thoughts. Anonymity on. allows you to post what you want without actually committing yourself to having bad opinions uh, and you know facing consequences for it ever. But I don't really use it for that. My opinions aren't really for cheesecake. Um, mm. it's more just anonymity allows you to interact with people you normally wouldn't have because mm. you don't have the barriers of your stereotypes to block you from talking to them. Yeah. I've actually kind of felt that even, even though I'm like face posting, it's like there are people I interact with that I probably wouldn't have interacted with if I had not met them through Twitter. Um, in a good way. It's just been a good thing. Um, P Zombie, Kersey, what do you feel like not using a face leaves out? For me, I don't know. Part of it is the, the reason I got on Twitter in the first place was in service of something that my like face self is in favor of. I don't know. I feel like I lose the connection. Lithros feels like an alt, even though he's not one. Do you agree with that? Well... What do you mean? I don't know. Like, it, I don't know. 
Maybe half and half. Lathros is the Anon Twitter account of Face AVI Twitter. Um, he really is, honestly. Mm. I don't understand why that is, but he, he definitely is. He posts with the boldness and just meme energy that an Anon right. usually has. Right. Um, but his name and his face are still on there. It just doesn't seem as important as the content he posts. Yeah. Let's see what else I have here. Um, okay, then whose turn is it for a question? Not sure. Okay, I'll ask you a question. Um, okay, you told me this already, but can you just give the so the story of story time? So story time started because we were bored in the Cheesecake Discord on a voice call. And um, Prester John Boy, um, Timaeus in here, um, found Timaeus. like an angling manual from, I don't know, the 17th century or something, uh, and was just reading it. And we all just kind of went silent and listened to him for a while. Uh, and then at the end, we asked him to read some more stuff. And the next day, we asked him to read some more stuff. And so it just became a thing. To do and everyone seems to really like it it i don't know it affords a sense of community that we didn't have before really i guess mm. yeah i like story time um and presser john boy has a, has a fantastic um uh californian accent that we His story time voice is so killer yeah yeah um we hopefully gonna get some get some Prester John boy on our on our twitch story time um, let me think what, what question I have about that PJB I Stan we do stand PJB we stand PJB by the way Andorra is super cool yeah isn't it pretty it's very pretty PBJ Prester Boy John. <laughs> Prester John Boy. We were reading some Shakespeare the other day and Prester John came up. I don't know if it was a character called Prester John. JBP. <laughs> right, I'm going to try to do a barrel roll. Okay, nice. That's pretty good. No problem. No problem. He's a medieval legend. Reference to the Patriarch. All right, hit me with a question, Cheesecake. The Thros is linking Prester John, and if I click that, it reveals that Prester John is a legendary Christian patriarch and king. Cool. So, um, I was told to ask you, what's your deal? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. Next. Fantastic. How yep. does the mustache affect your brand? How does the f who asked that? Where did you get these questions? <laughs> I come up with them. You came up with them? <laughs> uh-huh. But you're not actually curious about any of this shit. What? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not curious about this stuff? If I ask a question, I want it answered. I know you want it answered. That's different than being curious about it. <laughs> why, why would you think I'm not curious about it? Because on the last question, you said, I said, why'd you ask it? And then you said it's because you just had to come up with some questions. It's not, it's not really, well, it's because I did have to come up with a question. But since I did have to come up with a question, I might as well have come up with a nice one. A nice one. But, but not when you're curious about it. Well, yes, what I'm curious about. That I was curious about that. How? Why would I not be curious about that? No, I'm not saying you weren't. I just didn't get the sense that you were. But if you're saying you were, I would believe you if you were saying that. Well, I was curious about it, and I am curious about how the mustache affects your branding. Okay, and so what do you mean by my branding? <laughs> well, without the mustache, I don't think you would be who you are. Right. So who would you be without the mustache? How would that affect you and your general presentation? 
so this is the thing. I kind of... <laughs> people are fucking <laughs> highlighting messages. <laughs> All right. I kind of want to shave it off. I'm, I'm telling the truth. I do actually kind of want to shave, shave it off. Um, I do like it. I mean, hold on. Let me look at myself right now. Hold on. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. I do kind of like it. Um, and I sometimes want to shave it off. Uh, let me go back to the game. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to make my face so fucking big. I do like it. I kind of want to shave it off. There's things I like about it. How does it affect my brand? If I shave it off, something weird would happen, and I don't know what. And I'm known for the mustache. I am known for the mustache. That's true. That's true. I might lose. So I might lose a little. Why? Why do you love me, Egg Prophet? <laughs> To make an alt that is just a picture of you without the mustache. <laughs> Why are they saying I love you? I don't understand. Thanks. Thank you, I profit. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why people are laughing. Maybe it's just because I made my face big and that was unexpected. It's because your answers to this question. You just had like so much reluctance about this question, and that was very strange to me. I think. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. All right. All right. No. We, uh, look, you want to know the truth, Cheesecake? Do you want to know the truth? Yes. I'll tell you the truth. The truth is, I, I have crawled deep into the skin suit of Michael Kersey, and I don't even know who he is anymore. I am simply a spirit animating a brand entity made of flesh and bone. Under my birth name, I just, I just say stuff. And that, that's, that's how I feel about it. Um, the, uh, <laughs> okay, that's a little bit more extreme than I meant to put it. <laughs> Congrats, you've unlocked Cartesian dualism. No, I'm going to tell you the truth. My, my, are you there, Cheesecake? I'm here. Okay. Because I just want to make sure you're actually interested in this question. Yeah, I'm actually interested. What you're saying has, like, very interesting implications for everything you've done okay okay cool um well that's a little bit that's a little bit much i'm going to psychoanalyze you now <laughs> okay okay so you know rival voices right um no you don't know rival voices well maybe okay there's this account called rival voices that everyone knows about let me look answer the question yeah i do know rival you know rival voices, voices. so yes. rival voices has knuckles okay mm -hmm. you got in knuckles rival voices has talked about talked about uh you got in knuckles being like a creation of the the human being that runs the account right and the i don't know i don't know it's just i think about identity a lot like i mean yeah like you know, philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator, motherfucker. I mean, it's like a little bit of a meme, but like, I do actually think about the nature of identity, and I think of personality as a tool, and it's like you also want it to be natural, right? So, I don't know. It's like the truth is, like, at this point, uh, look at my fucking icon on Twitch. It's this, like, mustache face, right? My picture on Twitter is mustache face. What if I make it big and I keep the iconography of mustache self? They're still screaming at me to answer the question. <laughs> Um, and, um, and then someone gets on my Twitch and I don't have a mustache. How would they feel? How do you think they would feel? I think they would feel just a little jarred. Yeah, they'd be like, who's this guy? This is some random fucking dude. I didn't sign up for some random dude. And Lithos would be happy. We're not screaming, we're being fired. No, but that's how it's affected my brand. I, I am going to shave it off. I am going to shave it off on some point. I've thought about, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe I'll release a video of just yes. me sh shaving my mustache. H here's a question for you, Cheesecake. I'm going to ask you a question. Can I mail it to you when I shave it off? That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, mail it to Scott. Mail it to Scott. Donate it to charity. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying it's weird. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a weird thing to say. 
and a weird thing to think <laughs> or believe. <laughs> Dancing horse, I'm throwing it out if it comes in the mail. <laughs> What do you think? What did you just what did you just link? Vogel Frey, please not, don't let this be a bad Chris Hansen. Gimme the stash. Where do you get all these fucking points, Kiwi? <laughs> Alright, cheesecake, help me out. With what? What would you do if you were me? What do you mean? What would you do if you were me? You've got this big Sexy mustache. But you kind of want to shave it off. But it's kind of... But, but yes? Uh, no, no, no. You keep going. Well, you kind of want to shave it off. But it's part of how you're known. And it's all... It, even your emotes on Twitch are... <laughs> hey, Liminal's here. Um, even your emotes on Twitch are you with the mustache. It's all a whole thing. You made all these friends on the basis of this mustache. So the question is, what would you do? I think I'd keep the mustache. You just keep it's, it? What? Um, well, yes, because it's part of your brand. It's part of who you are. Um, it's... Well, I've had the same issue with the pink cat. I've kind of wanted to change it before. Right. Um, but it's kind of become who I am, and I feel like that it wouldn't... I don't think I would be quite me, well, right. as me as I am if I changed it for good. Well, Liminal's making a Samson comparison, like I'll lose my power. Consider that you could carefully remove it and bronze it. Now that is quite cool, actually. How would I bronze... Lim, Lim, if you actually have knowledge um, of how to bronze a mustache and then sell it for money, I would actually 100% do that. I would sell a bronzed version of my mustache. Name one venerable figure that would support you for shaving the sash. A any figure that was in favor of living as your true self. I mean, if the true self goes in the direction of wanting to shave it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it's not about the, it's not about the stash. It's about living life, you know what I'm saying? Kiwi will buy it, okay. <laughs> That's cool. Wear it like a necklace. NFT of me shaving it. <laughs> nice necklace, thanks, I grew it myself. But this is the thing. People, here's the question. Why do people like the mustache? Why do they like it? They like it because of the idea. It's just an idea. It's just like a meme. It's like the idea that, it, what is it? It's like kind of manly. It's kind of like not in the era. It does look good on me. That's true. It has charm. I appreciate it. All right, here's part of it. And I'm not trying to be horny on my own damn show. But here's part of it. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying that this would affect my behavior. I'm not planning to cut it off for a woman. There is no particular woman asking me to cut it off. It's not a thing. I don't understand how anybody would be down to make out a, with a face that has that much hair on it. I swear, to, I'm just saying that as a matter of physical simulation in my head. Mental simulation. I'm just noting that this is a, a thing that is on my mind. Okay, real talk time. It's true about the makeup thing, says Liminal. Okay, Malty, I understand. I know your boyfriend does have more facial hair and you really love it, but that's more. And also, his looks like soft. Mine is kind of like a wire brush. It's true. I'm going to have to shave if I want to kiss a girl. Well, clearly, some women are a okay with it, or they, I hope they were, because in history, so many people had mustaches. Mustache is kind of a dad thing, but maybe it's a good kind of dad thing. Well, thank you. I feel Lord. like with the mustache, I'm allowed to make fun of you. With the mustache, you're allowed to make fun of me. I mean, I'd also be allowed to make fun of you without it. But the mustache, it just gives you an extra layer of protection from all of my, my taunts. So well, you make fun of you make fun of Lithros. Lithros. Well, yeah, I make fun of Lithros, but I think he can handle it more. Yeah. This is me making fun of you, in case you didn't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, Beast. Kersey roams the landscape, scouring the faces of women with any amorous interest in his face, destroying lips and exfoliating as he goes. My dude, you just have a way with words. 
catches all the mockery that comes. I think I have to shave it off. It does give you a very distinctive thing. That's your brand. That's true. But why did I build my brand on this on this facial hair? I kind of want to shave it off like right now. Part of me is like I should just shave it off like right now, just to make a point. Then That'll do be... it. No, 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 no. Uh... <laughs> do it. What a power move. <laughs> Everyone's saying do it. Commit yeah, brand it. cuckoo. Right now? Yeah. <sighs> Let me think about the consequences here. Do it. Do it. Oh my god. Epic season for now. said he wanted to. I said I've been thinking about it. I'm not. Hold on. Let me look at it. Well, you also said you wanted to. Your hesitation only look. makes me stronger. Uh, it, okay, but this is the thing. No one has a goddamn clue. I, I've had this for a while. I do kind of like it. Think about the historical movement. Flip a coin. That's interesting. It's the season finale. It is the season what finale. What way could it end? <laughs> with, you have to kill off a character every season. This time, the character is your mustache. The character is my mustache. Yes. But real question is, how long would it take me to regrow it? And I don't actually know. So this is your experiment. This is the experiment. I could just regrow it. Yeah. I should make you guys subscribe or something. No. 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 All right, you want to do this? Are we doing this right now? Are we fucking doing yes. this right now? Okay. Everyone needs to chill out. Calm, the, calm down. You're allowed to tweet. If you, I, I'm more likely to want to do this if we actually get some people in here. So yeah, I do appreciate this other. You can you can tweet it. Right now? Oh Crazy god. Shaving his mustache. Oh god. This is fascinating. Oh man. What a way to go. Yeah, fuck it. Okay, fine. Let's fucking do it. I will be right back. Let me just get the proper equipment. <clears throat> Pardon me, friends. Don't don't burn the place down while I'm gone. I I hope, I hope I'm just going to literally hide my hide my face. Seen it, folks. That's the power of cheesecake. I've seen him without the mustache. He he looks like um he looks like Dane Cook. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, he posted a picture um to to the Kersey cord like once. Let me see if I can find it because um. Rita Del Duol kept making like edits and stuff and saying he looked like Dane Cook and it was really funny. Yeah, she's going to have to watch the recording of this because it's it's too marvelous to miss. What is it? What? Why did you say shut up? Because <laughs> look at the chat. Because they're just going crazy. They're just going crazy. They're just going crazy. All right. Let me change my music. I want to do this right. Let me change my music. Give me a second. I just I gotta get the mood right. You know. Yeah, now I'm kind of feeling like I like I like it. You know what I mean? 
Well, you always miss something right before you lose it. But then once you lose it, you realize that you didn't actually miss it all that much. Sometimes. Did you miss it? <laughs> mm-hmm. So you just gotta psych your, you're just psyching yourself out right now, honestly. No, I'm not psyching. I'm not psyching myself out. I'm not psyching myself out. Now oh, this is some fucking. Here we go. Let's get some something kind of hype going. I am gonna take my time with this. I'm not rushing this. I'm not rushing this. This is pretty intense. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a little bit much. It's a little bit much. It's a little bit much. It's a little bit intense. It's, no, it's good. You guys like it. You guys like, like the fucking cyberpunk. The six cyberpunk beats. All right, let's start at the beginning. Okay, Cheesecake, how you doing? How are you? You what? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you feeling? I feel good. No, I feel more and more committed to this as, as the time goes on. Do you feel... Yes. That's the way it should be. Yeah, holy shit, 47 people. All right. What's what's the greatest number of people you've had on here? We When Eigen was on, I think we had 75 or something like that. But this is pretty hype, though. Do you feel in control? Did Lim say, hey, Visa's here? Yo, Hi, Visa. Visa's here? <laughs> All right, I do like these files. Patience, Visa. No, I, I got I to gotta get in the zone. So let me reflect just for a moment on the mustache. Let's reflect on some mustache memories together. The thing that I'm thinking of... Got some shit on my shirt. The thing that I'm thinking of... Hold on, let me get this shit off my shirt. Oh, it's on this side. That's the problem. Where's that picture of Kaiser Wilhelm? Visa knows the one I'm talking about. There's a picture of him and he just looks so damn good. I have, to, I have to search the word Kurzhelm. Because I know someone made that joke. There it is. There it is. Hold on. I'll throw it in Twitch so I can click it. No, we're going to reflect on some mustache memories. So, I've had a mustache one time before in my life. And, uh... This is really intense. Cheesecake, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. If you're not interested in this topic, we don't have to do this right now. I, I want to see it. You want to see it? Mm-hmm. No, but do you want to hear my rambling about my you memories? You talk about the mustache. You may talk about the mustache. I, I do have to talk about the mustache. So. Yes. Okay. So let's just squeeze this down to the right size. Sort of have them nearby. This is Kaiser Wilhelm. I guess I guess I guess I should go this way. Um, I had a great memory where someone tweeted and compared me to Kaiser Wilhelm. I really liked the look of this picture. You know. Um, yeah, there's. No, oh yeah. By the way, just getting ahead of this right now. There's going to be no Hitler. There's going to be no Hitler mustache. That's not going to happen. Getting ahead of that. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> nope. So I do have my tools here. Okay. I got a dish even. Dish even. Yeah, I got a dish. Wow. For those who didn't see, I've been eating some. I've been having some. Uh, this uh, randomly named snack as well. Dish. Oh, the thin line. The thin line. No, no, no. Hold on. Wait. We're still in memories mode. Cheesecake. We can't get in the way of memories mode. Right. Walt Disney. Let's talk about Walt Disney. Now, Walt Disney has a mustache as well. Right? Are you a fan of Walt Disney? Cheesecake? Um, I guess... I guess so, yes. Now, it's, this is interesting. You can see that look. He's got the... Uh, Hell yeah! That's what I'm 
Hey, oh, thanks for the that? sub, Egg Prophet. Copyright oh my mostly. God. All right, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Appreciate the sub, my dude. I'm not gonna let this drag out too long. I am gonna get to it. Let me just text one of my friends. About to shave the stash on stream. LOL. <laughs> That's a good text. Let me try it. Let me text one other dude. I'm gonna have to go back and read this. Okay, so by the way, liminal warmth. We should talk about whether Disney was anti-Semitic because I'm actually seriously interested in this topic. I don't know that there were any rants and I've actually investigated it. And I am Jewish, and I do have opinions. I don't currently think that he is um, actually an anti-Semite. Salvador Dali. Okay, so, Cheesecake, maybe the move is I would shave some of the top just to get a look at what the pencil would be like. You can do that. You should try that. I should try it. Maybe yeah, let's see what that that's is. What I'm talking about. Hey, thanks for the sub, Lim. What's the link? My, 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 my best friend says, what's the link? Bro. <laughs> He says, what's the link? Myfreecams.com. <laughs> yeah, we are going to try the pencil mustache. Oh, hey. Hey, what's up, Henry? Also, by the way, I'm going to have to get my keyboard out of the way. So we are actually unplugging this. Got the sub from Henry person. Keyboard's out of the way. <laughs> oh, wait, I can't alt-tab anymore. Shit. I don't want to get hair in my keyboard, though. Might look really weird. Let's just squeeze it back here. Big shot. Oh man, oh, it says hype train. I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> what? Oh, this is great. <laughs> the sacrifice is earning stuff. I know. And the question is, the question, Lim, is, is it is it an honorable sacrifice or is it being kind of is is it bending to the will? Hold on, I gotta change the. Is it the bad kind? I just want to put this black background over the face. <laughs> what are you giggling about? What do you mean? Um. Well, you know, is it like I suggested it, Zorro style? <laughs> what's up, Snap Man? Nah. Totes honorable. Okay, so what's the move? Do I go down? I down a little bit. And then, I don't know. There's one other stash I want to bring up. So we've got uh, Disney. And we just had... Where the fuck is it? We had Kaiser Wilhelm. Yeah, Kaiser. Kaiser. Yeah, yeah, Kaiser Wilhelm. We had. And then the other one I want is, uh, what, Burt Reynolds? Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Thanks for the sub, Magic Squirrel. I'm actually going to get more emotes. Maybe we're going to unlock a stashless emote. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, no. Burt Reynolds is not who I'm thinking of. I do like Burt Reynolds. Um, but, uh, hold on. Let me, let me go to my own Twitter. Um, so what do you want me to read? Who? Who are you talking to, Cheesecake? Um, Visa is saying, can you read something creepy and corporate sounding? <laughs> this guy. Who's this guy? Someone here knows this guy's name. I'm sorry, Dave. Can't let you do that. Tom Selleck. Yes, thank you. So, how does Tom Selleck's mustache look? It's kind of, um... Thrust, what do you want me to read? This link? It's not story time yet, Cheesecake. We're doing the mustache. I know, but he wants me to read this link, and I think it might be related to the mustache. Yeah. He looks incredibly Mexican. Uh, yeah. You want me to read the Johnson and Johnson credo? That's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Right now, or like during story time? This guy looks pretty, pretty Chad. Look at this guy. 
We believe our first responsibility is to the patients, doctors, and nurses, to mothers and fathers, and all others who use our products and services. In meeting their needs, everything we do must be of high quality. We must constantly strive to provide value, reduce our costs, and maintain reasonable prices. Customers' orders must be serviced promptly and accurately. Our business partners must have an opportunity to make a fair profit. We are responsible to our employees who work with us throughout the world. We must provide an inclusive work environment where each person must be considered as an individual. We must respect their diversity and dignity and recognize their merit. They must have a sense of security, fulfillment, and purpose in their jobs. Compensation must be fair and adequate, and working conditions clean, orderly, and safe. We must support the health and well-being of our employees and help them fulfill their family and other personal responsibilities. Employees must feel free to make suggestions and complaints. There must be equal opportunity for employment, development, and advancement for those qualified. We must provide highly capable leaders and their actions must be just and ethical. We are responsible to the communities in which we live and work, and to the world community as well. We must help people be healthier by supporting better access and care in more places around the world. We must be good citizens, support good works and charities, better health and education, and bear our fair share of taxes. We must maintain in good order the property we are privileged to use, pro protecting the environment and natural resources. Our final responsibility is to our stockholders. Business must make a sound profit. We must experiment with new ideas. Research must be carried on. Innovative programs developed, investments made for the future, and mistakes paid for. New equipment must be purchased, new facilities provided, and new products re launched. Reserves Forget must this. be created to provide for adverse times. When we operate according to these principles, stockholders should realize a fair return. Johnson & Johnson. Hell yeah. Sorry, I just gotta get this set up. Because I did cl I did say this was gonna happen. Right? There we go. Alright guys. I think we should uh, we should get into this. I think we should do this. Are you ready, Cheesecake? Yes, I am ready for this. I think I've reflected enough. Ready? I'm fucking ready. No, I'm fucking ready. It's time for change. We're going to change it up. We'll see if I still have any friends after this online. I'm going to try to not get any in my... Uh, it's a little bit weird, actually, using... I wish I had a mirror. Yeah, this is backwards. This is backwards. I can't do this backwards. Hold on, hold on. Let me get a mirror. Johnson and Johnson shit. All right, Lisa, I'll read your thing. Give me a minute. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watch sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears and rain. Well, I the smallest this one I could a find. Planned shenanigan. <laughs> I'm not going wild. I'm just doing this right. One second. All I need is to like bleed. There we go. There we go. I got this there. Cheesecake, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready for this. All right. If I move this, y'all are going to see that my room's actually a giant fucking mess. Maybe do it like that. Something like that. Uh-oh. Let's try this.
Man, this is wild. I've thought about this moment for a while now. <laughs> Thanks for the blessing, Lithros. All right, I'm doing it. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'm going to laugh and I'm going to blow the hairs all over the place. I'm trying to keep these hairs for, for Kiwi and not get them on my floor. So no laughing. No laughing. If I play for cheese. If you what? I Well, they want me to do a play-by-play. -play. Yeah, go ahead. You can play by play. All right. And Kersey approaches his face with a tiny scissor. <laughs> and the... <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Cheesecake, the narration. Well, Krizzy, I'm trying really hard not to laugh. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. This he is... approaches his face with the tiny scissors and begins to cut. How far will he make it? Is that the whole thing? Get These little, are very small scissors. Get a little nose out there. And now he's trimming his nose hair, which isn't exactly what we asked for, but I guess we'll take it. While we're here. Already it looks weird. But I gotta go a little deeper, I think, to... Uh... You guys can see this, right? Yes, we can see it. All right. And the audience is going insane. The crowd goes wild, artisanal shaving. I'm gonna grow it back, you know. Cheesecake, narrate. Okay. And he's pulling the hairs off his face, trying not to inhale them in, and he's trying not to, <laughs> to laugh as his narrator starts to lose it. Cheesecake, just read the comments out loud. Oh, Fortuna, Velet Luna. Oh, Tempora, oh, Mores. Meow. Hunmari each snip. Did those hairs spark joy? This looks weird. This looks weird. Of course it looks weird but it'll look less weird when it's fully done. But hold on, how do you get that look? I want that look. Let's get Burt Reynolds out of here. Um, not the Burt Reynolds look. Where'd Disney go? What is this look? It's a little confusing, isn't it? Oh, mine is just too thick. Did someone say is it too thick? I need to thin it out. Okay, Cheesecake, what do you think? Do I thin it out? I think I should thin it out next, but keep it, but thinner. Does that seem right? Just take the whole thing off. Just take the whole thing off. Go whole ham, go whole hog. <laughs> I'm thinning it. I'm thinning it. Oh, yeah, and you can also see his upper lip. All right, Cheesecake, don't stop narrating. And I'm asked to keep narrating, even though I don't have all that much to say. It's a hairy situation for all involved, but I think we can do it. <laughs> I like that hairy situation. I thought you would. And, <laughs> and every snip takes us closer to uncovering the truth. What does Kersey's upper lip look like? Hope this isn't against Twitch Terms of Service. For thoughtly behavior. <laughs> yeah, but I keep breathing and almost knocking these on the ground. I think we're good though. You know, I could put some of these. I wish I had a brush. I could put these in a bag. I brought a bag. What lipstick am I wearing? I just have to, I just have nice lips. This is actually this is making me think I should have fucked with it more earlier. 
I must stall. Listen, I can't. I gotta went this far. All right. How does this? Hold on. We might overtake. I can robots. Um, I can robots. Yeah, Twitch yeah, yeah. Numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we we're gonna overtake his fucking Twitch numbers. Jesus, I need a little more light. I better let him know. Yeah. The the um the Disney is a little confusing to me. It is short, but somehow it does make it. He just has thinner lips than I do. Cause the Freddie Mercury. What's up, Visa? I don't know what mustache water is. Mama, just killed a man. Oh, hey, Riddle Doodle. Doodle, we're making Curvy shave his mustache. Nobody's I'm making me do anything. Either. Nobody's making me do anything. I'm making a choice. Welcome I'm a free man. To this Thanks for the follow, Ben Ratkey. What's up, man? Thin it out first, then the upper lip strategy will become clearer. Oh, that was a that was a hair that ended up in my mouth. All right, fine. Thin it out first. Cheesecake, please proceed with the narration. All right, I gotta move Disney. And he's moving the picture of Walt Disney over so we can see what crazy shenanigans he's getting up to with those scissors. What do you think's going on behind that picture? Yeah, keep going. Just, just read chat. Read the chat. A free man who's too afraid of his own mustache to strike it from his face. That's exactly right. Whoever said that, that is exactly right. That's Limb and exactly warm. Right. Limb understands. Thank you. Jeez, what have you done? I've done the Lord's work with the Del Duol. You know it had to be done. <clears throat> Hold on. Brief break. Water. And he's taking a break. Couldn't take the heat. It doesn't look so good right now. Uh, I'm 19. We can add some blue light. Uh, the You're blue, killing it, Kersey. The blue You're light cam. It. Thank Oops. you, Riddell Duol. I'm doing my best. See, I would not go out in public looking like this. It's hard to make this work. The blue light's a little bit much. And the blue light's a little much. It's obscuring everything he's doing. All right, let's keep it, let's keep it moving. No stopping now. Eris is trying to get me to swear on the stream. I mean, oh my God! Wait, we have seventy-one people. Can I uh -huh. at least get some fucking follows and subs for this? That would be nice. Not that I care. He's gonna <laughs> fiddlesticks. Swear on stream. Cheese. Say friggin'. Cheese. Say heck. Cheese. Thank you, Niasad. Welcome. We don't do this every week, by the way. I can't do this every week. Please say please cake. Please cake. Cut off the mustache. Bake shop. Thank you, my friend. Welcome. Jeez, same moth. Congratulations, Bake Shop. You just subscribed. <laughs> Kersey, cut off your mustache. All right. All right. See, it's just thin now. It's like not really anything. Um, maybe I'm gonna cut it up to the lip. It's gonna be real thin. Okay. All right. And he's cutting a mustache up to the lip. It's gonna be real thin. <laughs> The napkin at. I thought you had some thoughts on this. Get the lip creeper stash? Yeah. Shave their mustache by cutting it one hair at a time? Or is that just you? Hecklers. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh yeah, we're going with the thin stash. This is going to look real weird. And he's going with the thin stash. He's made his decision. Yeah. Or is he going with the thin stash? Maybe he'll change his mind again. Social Maybe call. he'll cut the whole thing Turn off. Thanks for the follow, Chew Mandel Stam. Hey, I saw you on uh, I can sing the other day. 
Weird. Does yeah. it scare you? This is what I really look like. I'm a golem. Just a machine, a jumble of metal and plastic that pretends to be real. Thank you, Arisala. This is different. It's a lot more manageable, too. I, I cut it a little too much right there. We, we got some coins or some shit. Hey, gifted subs. Thanks, dude. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel... How do I feel? Yeah, how do you feel? Honestly, dude, I kind of like touching my lip. I kind of like it. It kind of feels good. Do you feel freer? Do you feel... But I'm not done, Cheesecake. I can't feel totally free until I'm done. Well, then you'd better get done. Better get done. Do you think I should just, just go for it? You should just go for it. Should I thin it a little bit more? Like on the sides? No, alhamdulillah, we will cut it all off soon. Alhamdulillah, we will cut it off soon. Return to the lip. Thanks for the follow dancing horse. Alhamdulillah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shrink it a little bit. This is actually kind of interesting. It's fascinating. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. I like this biblical shit. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair, and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. My dad actually cut my hair, but there's a guy in Oakland that I go to who's, who's much better than my dad. just want to get the whole, get a sense of it, you know? No, that, that was just hair wax. These guys do not... Uh, support my channel, but they should. This is what I use for the stash. The Amish beard balm. Did Kiwi buy some subs or some shit? Oh shit! Kiwi? 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 Thank you, Kiwi. Kiwi, thank you for the subs. Okay. Are we gonna get this done? Um, yeah, we're gonna get this done. If you're not interested, I don't have to keep going. I could just live like Herzy, this. Keep going. I'm telling you to keep going. Okay. You're the one... But this looks kind of good. I feel like this looks surprising. Eh, it doesn't look that good. You committed. You committed to shading the whole thing. You're, you're right. It's time to switch tools. Time to switch tools. And we're at 70 viewers. Who knew? And there he goes. He's just going at it. Just going ham. Just going... Away. He's freeing himself from the hairy prison that he created. Will his power remain, or will it be gone with every slice of the blade? Now this is getting a little bit too thin, but it's not quite at the level where it's definitely too thin. Kind of weird. It's a little too boxy. It's actually a little dangerous here. Welcome, Welcome Rabu. I hope you're not here for mustache shaving every week. I don't know. It's different. It's too short, though. All right, let's go. You got the whole thing. Got to do the whole thing. Let's get a little. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing it is. The whole thing it is. And then maybe we'll grow it back, maybe we won't. We're in the final stretch, cheesecake. Final stretch. And he goes with the scissors again. And he goes with the scissors again. Oboe. Wow. One world, one foot in each world. No need to hide any of your features, it turns out. You look a little younger. Get a clean shave all the way and get spiky boy band hair. Yeah, man. Bring me back to fifth grade. Her lip is becoming more and more revealed with every single snip. How does it feel to be so seen? 
How does it feel to be so known? Not the same. And we've beaten Eigen Robot's uh, viewing record. Have we done it? Uh, 77. I think that's it. Oh shit. Final stretch. Bustin, do you want me to read that? Do you want me to read your most recent comment? Because I can do that. You got a gift that sells? Thank you, Lynn. With so many subs, how do you feel? This is... How this do I is feel? real season finale. Yeah, seriously. This is, well, this is more hype than I expected. Well, yeah, of course it's more hype. You're cutting off a significant feature. Yeah. Live amputation. I mean, that's amputation it. Amputation of the soul? Man, I have not seen that face in a long time. 80 viewers. It would knock it out of the park. He was going ape shit with the sub gifts. Holy shit. Alright, well. There we go. Let's go a little off the corners here. It's from the ashes, stronger than ever. About. Thanks for the sub, Radley. Alright, I think that's... Damn. I'm a kind of good-looking guy. Alright, congratulations. Emote no longer applicable. He's a new man. Time for some peaceful music. In the aftermath. Zolt may be gone, but maybe a new power will rise. Oh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. What? Look what they did to my boy. <laughs> yeah. Look what they did to my boy. Look what they did to my boy. Huh. You did it. You did it. I did it. I'm so proud of you. Look at you go. I, this isn't an F. This is a W. It's not an F. It's a W. Cheesecake, I feel I have you to thank. Listen, no. They, we got some... We got an F. I better not laugh because I got this hair. Huh. We're in the home stretch now. Final snips. Final snips. I think that's basically it. I mean, it's a little. There's a couple hanging out. I'll give it a proper shave later. Damn. Well, there you go. There you have it, friends. And there we have it. The there. stash is gone. Stash is gone. Yeah, it was a victory lap. You know, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it like this. Congratulations. Yeah, this... You've made it. You've won. You've done it. I've done it. Now, here, let's actual. You guys can see this One bizarre. One hell of a season finale. One hell of a season finale. I am proud to be here. Yeah, dude. Cheesecake, you you made it happen. You can take credit. You can, we gotta give, sorry I'm wobbling my shit all over the place. We gotta give you like a title, like Stash Slayer or some shit like that, you know, like. <laughs> Alright, well, sorry, this is just gonna have to be how it is. Um, but I wanna like, look at this, I could draw, I could make snow angels. Like 
playing slasher. Send you my address. Look at all that. It doesn't look like so much right there, but this was all on my face, you know? Cheesecake whisker bane. <laughs> Upper lip emancipator. We're... 81 viewers. Ooh. 81 viewers. Hey, guys. I've Everyone, beaten er, Eigenrobot. <laughs> you've beaten Eigenrobot. <laughs> and that's what really counts. And that's what really counts. That's what really counts. I, I shit you not. Uh, Cheesecake, I did not plan to do this. You know I did not plan to do this. Oh, definitely no, you didn't plan to do this. Yeah. If you did plan to do this, you would have told me. I would have made you tell me. Yeah, you did want me to tell you. Yep. Some stuff. About what we were gonna do. Well, I require plans. You require plans, and then you destroy them. <laughs> it's true. Are they magnetic? I'm just trying to conserve as much of this as possible for future generations. What am I gonna do with this hair? The kiwi. It's been the highlight of my day. Well, we're glad to have you. Let send it to kiwi. But should I bronze it first or something? <laughs> Glue it to my face. <laughs> Glue it back on. I mean, this is the real... <laughs> what? The throws is like, seriously, man. Seriously, mail it to Kiwi. Seriously. Alright, this might be all that we're gonna save, because it's hard to get... Oh my god. A gifted sub. Thank you, Radley. Let me just get this shit off my hands. Hair everywhere. Yeah, this is this is what I look like. This is the me I'm used to. Some shit in my hair. The real the real Kersey. Yeah, there is the problem of magical influence, and uh, I have asked about that on Twitter. Damn, sub gifts all over, all the way across the sky. Cheesecake, how you doing? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I do look younger. Yeah. I'm not that old. There it is. And the stash is in the bag. Stash has been bag. sealed. Bag. The stash is bagged. Stash has been bagged. Let's put that on the side over here for later. You know. I'll uh, put the stash <laughs> dish to the side, I guess. The stash dish. Yeah. Let's get a little lint roll going on. The ch stash is chashed. I'm now 19 years old. Got a lint roll. I feel I feel pretty good. If it, you know what, there were, it could have happened a worse way. Put it like that. It really could have. Could have happened a worse way. I'm finding a couple hairs here and there, but <laughs> <laughs> wait, how old is Kersey? A gentleman never tells. Let's say nineteen. Let's say nineteen. All right. 18 year old virgin, 47, 33, we'll let you guys guess. Some of you know. <sighs> this happened. This happened. Amazing. Well, Cheesecake, is it time for story time? Uh, I guess it is time for story time. Because <laughs> I would still very much like to hear Beast read something. All right, well, I think it would mark the occasion well. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Maybe someone can read about Samson. <laughs> I think I did. 
Somebody had me read several Bible verses about Samson yeah. while you were shaving. Good to see you, Eris. Thank you for coming by. Shave your head. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll have to... Let me grab a beer. Blunderbuss is grabbing a beer. Man, this is interesting. Yeah, the question... You know, I do want to shorten it just a little bit. It's, no, it's bugging me. No, I can wait. I can wait. Wax yourself smooth. That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> And the viewer count is climbing again. Well, hello, guys. Go bear. Rose, razor time, no stub. He degreebled you. Degreebled. Degreebled. Well, we got rid of one big greeble, and now there's a lot of little greebles. Let's keep it PG. P zombie. Glue it back right now. Riddle Doodle, did you like my stash? No, I totally cannot stop touching the spot. That's true. Degreeble. Alright, wait, should we do a vote? A vote for what? Was it better with better on or off? Here we go. And we're going to not allow bonus votes. Here we go. Starting the poll. Let's see it. You can click the poll in the... In the... Uh, oh, yeah. This is me looking, looking straight. Look at the camera. I'm looking. Oh, hi. I'm Michael Kersey. No, I don't have a mustache. I just talk like this. Before a pick. You, you better vote. Oh, man. It's like completely even. Holy fuck. All right. Everybody vote for face naked because that's what I am. What do you mean you need before after picks? I just had a mustache on like 20 fucking minutes ago. I agree with Liminal. I agree. This is the thing. A, a liminal is telling the truth. This is the thing. I'm going to tell you the truth. Are you there, Cheesecake? Here. Okay, I just want to make sure. Because if you're not interested in this, you know, I don't know. We well, can... I, I would not be leaving this. Okay. Um, so, let me tell you the truth. Liminal is correct, and the reason is dudes like the stash, and dudes like muscles. Sorry, I got this shit in my hand. Dudes like muscles. Dudes like huge muscles. It's a meme in the bodybuilding community that when you get huge muscles... Okay, the fi the poll ended. We got face naked, is, was the poll answer. I wonder if that shows in the, in the... It's interesting. I do look a little more... Um, I don't know. Something. Oops. I can't copy-paste across games. What was I saying? It is an interesting split. Cheesecake, are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, cool. So, if you look at the the hot here, I'm going to look at the camera. I'm going to try this looking at the camera thing. If you look at the hot dudes throughout history, if you look at, um, who's that guy? James Dean, the not the porn star, the, the actor. If you look at, you know, like Clark Gable. If you look at, like, uh, who's that guy in Magic Mike XXL? Um... Yeah, this is a thing. Who said that this is a thing from history, by the way? That's right. <laughs> Animal gets it. Yeah, the stubble. People like the stubble better. But the dudes, in, the the hot dudes, you know what I mean? The like, you know, the ones the ladies love. Um, they tend to not have it. Um, it's true that Freddie Mercury had a stash. But let's be honest. Bigger in the gay community, right? I think a lot of women probably like Freddie Mercury. But also he's like really fucking famous and sings well and stuff. Um, I think the stash is a good sometimes look for me. I think it is more man manly, but it more like fatherly, you know. Um, and women do like stubble. Riddle Doodle, even your favorite, uh, you know, that comedian guy that you like comparing me to. Cook. Uh, what's his name? Dane Cook. Dane Cook. Even Dane Cook, he's a stubble. He's a stubble man. It's 
So, well, I'm, I'm glad I, I could I could bring some. I, I'm gl I hope I hope at least the stream sparked joy. Put it like that. Totally did. A real man would keep the stash and still get the girl. That's true. And I may need to test myself sometime in my life to see if I've still got it. You know, with the stash. I can do a clean shave, but not, but not right this second. We got to do some story time. Um, so, uh, no trick. I think I did enough of story time with the Johnson and Johnson okay. credo. Okay, okay, okay. Um, should we get one from Blonder Buster? Just because I promised. Yes. All right. Let's yes. get let's get at least let's get one story. This will just be a dose. I, I, this was see. This is funny cheesecake. I wanted to have a cheesecake episode, and I think we ended up with a very cheesecake episode, though not the one yeah. I expected. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I feel the same way. This I think is we've... exactly it. Cool. We've done good. Um, so let's go back to... Uh... Hey, the plane is still flying. Yep. Literally the whole time, the plane has just been flying, and we're like over the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I keep expecting to see my stash there. We're literally just fucking flying right now. We're like, been moving this whole time. <sighs> Thanks for coming by, Lim. Why don't we find Beast and see if we can get that MF in uh, chat. Beast? Wrong way. Kept afloat by mustache. Thank you so much. Maybe. I did my best to narrate this. You did a good job. Oh, Beast is in the lobby. All right, well, let's get a story, Cheesecake, let's get a story from Beast, and then we'll close out the night and um, call it there. All right, sounds good to me. All right. Great having you, Lim, and anyone else we may be leaving at this time after the, uh... <laughs> yeah, where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is Kersey? Hey, Beast. Hey. What's up, my man? Beast. All right, uh, I can hear everyone. I just had to mute the, the stream. Yeah. Uh, hey. Uh, so, would you tell us I, a story, Beast? Yeah, I would love to tell you a story. I actually chose one earlier. This one, the first time I read it, I don't recall if this is the one that made me tear up, but uh, I looked up, um, let's see. Yeah, I looked up a little legend, because um, that's the kind of thing I like to read. And um, this one, I don't know, it was unexpectedly beautiful. It's from this book of essays that I've been reading um, to y'all over the last few nights, but um, it's called The Tree of Flowers. Sweet. Um, and let I'll me ask... Right yeah, yeah. Let me ask you really quick. Are you um, on the mic you want to be on? Are you on the best? your best mic? Yes. Is it not very good? No, it sounds good. There's just a little bit of teat, but if we can't remove that, no problem. No big deal. Hmm... Uh, there might be a button. Leave you... him alone, he's fine. Okay, okay, you're good. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, like, fucking over-optimizing. Alright, let's not worry about it. Is this a little better? You sound good. You sound good. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna turn down the lights. Oh, set the mood. Set the mood. Hey, everybody. This is story time. With Beast. Your lover and friend. <clears throat> I'm gonna read to you a little story called The Tree of Flowers. Martim Alfonso de Sousa, a Portuguese swashbuckler, having discovered and named the site of Rio de Janeiro, was born in Brazil. In 1534, he set sail for Asia with five ships and 2,000 soldiers, and the official title of Captain Major of the Seas. On the west coast of India, he defeated Ottoman armies and local kings, established colonies, was the sword that cleared the path for the cross of his colleague Francis Xavier, and seven years later, settled in Goa as governor of Portuguese Asia. What he had not done, however, was to achieve the fame that accompanied the conquest of a city of enormous wealth. He was jealous of Cortes and Pizarro and transfixed by the stories of Tiruputa, uh, God, these Aztec words, um, Tirupati on the rarely explored east coast of India, huh, where millions of pilgrims came to worship at the temple of uh, Vinca Shavara, the Lord of the Seven Hills, where idols were draped in necklaces of pearls and emeralds and diamonds from the nearby mines, where there were piles of gold coins as high as ten measures of wheat, the donations of the faithful and the tribute from the 150 villages the temple owned, 
and where it was said it would take 2,000 slaves to carry away all the treasure. In Europe, the word pagoda had first referred to the heathen idols in the Indian temples and to the temples themselves, and then, in a mixture of repulsion and greed, to the gold coins the temples hoarded. In 1543, Martim Alfonso launched the great pagoda voyage from Goa to conquer Tirupati with 2,500 soldiers, many of them merchant volunteers, and 200 cavalry. They were racked by unusual storms along the western coast, and then were beat calmed on Nedutivu, which the Portuguese called Cow Island, in the shallows of Chilal, in the straits between India and Ceylon. They sat in the windless heat for days, and so Martim Alfonso was overcome with an uncharistic melancholy and abruptly ordered his forces to return home. No one knows exactly what happened there, and he never attempted another expedition again. In the, vid in the villages around Tirupati, the knights were spent telling stories. One of them was about two beautiful sisters whose parents had died in a flood and who lived with their grandmother, a poor sweeper, in a ruin of a shack, surviving on handfuls of rice and scraps. We must help our grandmother, said the elder sister to the younger. I will tell you a secret. I know how to turn myself into a tree of flowers. We'll collect the flowers and sell them in the market, but follow my instructions precisely. The younger sister was told to fetch two jars of water, taking care not to let her fingernails scratch the jars, to pour the first over her sister, and then, when she had become a tree, to collect the flowers, taking care not to break a twig or tear a leaf, and then pour the second pitcher of water over her. The elder sister sat on the ground, meditating and chanting softly. The younger sister did as she was told. When the first jar was poured, the girl melted away, and a tall and magnificent tree grew up, covered with flowers of every color and fragrant with a fragrance like no other. The younger sister carefully collected the flowers. When her baskets were filled, poured the second jar, and her sister became her sister again. They took their baskets to the market at the foot of the palace walls, and the strange and intoxicating scent of the flowers drifted into the palace. The king's daughter, perplexed, poked her head out of a window and saw the sisters with their baskets full of flowers of every color, and sent someone down to buy them all. The sisters went home with a handful of coins, but didn't know uh, how to tell their grandmother what they had done, so they hid the coins away. For three days, the elder sister turned herself into a tree, the younger sister collected the flowers. They sold them in the market to the king's daughter and came home and hid the money. Then the king's son returned from home, or returned home from a hunting trip and found the palace filled with flowers of every color and redolent with strange and intoxicating fragrance. He asked his sister, was told the story, and poked his head out of the palace window to look at the two sisters in the market below. The younger was still a girl, but the elder had a face like the moon among the stars of the faces in a busy market, and she moved through the crowds like a gazelle. The king's son disguised himself as a farmer and followed the sisters home to where they lived, which is a romantic gesture. I always recommend stalking women who you smell and decide you like. The next morning, he disguised himself again and went to their house and peered through a crack in the wall. He saw the elder sister sitting on the ground, meditating softly, chanting, the younger sister pouring a jar of water over her and her transformation into a tree of flowers. Overcome with love, he went home to the palace and pleaded with his father, the king, to summon the, gran to summon the grandmother and ask for the elder sister to be his wife. The old woman summoned or the old woman was summoned and came home from the palace in a rage and beat the elder sister, accusing her of dishonorable things, for how could a king's son know the grandchild of a sweeper? The girl confessed her secret and produced the coins she had hidden, but the old woman wouldn't believe her until the two sisters, once again, to prove their honesty, turned the elder into a tree of fragrant and multicolored flowers. The wedding feast was huge and long, and the courtyard of the palace was filled with royal visitors from the neighboring kingdoms. At last, the couple were sent off to the bridal chamber, high in a tower. He sat on one side of the room and she on another, and they looked at each other and waited for the other to speak. He thought she was haughty in her silence, and she thought he was stubborn. And they sat there, not speaking, for three days. Finally, she couldn't stand it anymore, 
and asked him why he had married if he wasn't going to speak to her and what it was he wanted. He told her he wanted to turn into a tree and confessed how she had spied on her and knew her secret. She gave him the precise instructions which he followed and she melted away and a magnificent tree grew in the bridal chamber of the tower. He carefully gathered the flowers and scattered them on the floor until the room was deep with multicolored blossoms and thick with strange and intoxicating fragrance. Then she turned back into herself again and they made love on the clouds of petals all night long. In the morning, they swept up the blossoms and threw them out the window. That night and every night after, in a happiness that was a kind of delirium, she would turn into a tree and back again. And they would make love on the petals. Outside the window, at the foot of the tower, a huge mountain of withered blossoms grew. And then a storm came, and the winds blew the great heap of flowers over the city, and the whole city was filled with their strange and intoxicating fragrance. And the people began to look at each other in a different way, no longer glancing sideways. Now, when I first read the story, I thought that was the end of it, but I, I finished the book, and there was actually a second half to this story, and if you don't mind, I can be permitted to read this, and uh, it'll bring a whole different kind of bent to what was going on. How was that so far? That was great. I love listening Superb. to you. Superb. Okay, yeah. excellent. Can you, can you just help me make sure that I understand the major plot points? I sort of was thinking about the fact that I just shaved my mustache. The up. major what? Plot points of what you just said. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it started as, as this essayist often starts with, um, he'll offer disparate um, instances uh, um, on a theme or, or uh, di disparate stories on a theme. The mm. first part of it was about the Portuguese explorer who grow, grew bored and um, sought, you know, kind of strange lands for interesting stories uh, mm. uh, of wealth. And um, uh, he, he was not permitted to explore, you know, and find the pagodas um, by his fit of depression, um, which, which was kind of interesting. It allowed mystery of the Indian coast to kind of uh, uh, be permitted to continue to exist. And then mm. we went into a story of uh, these two sisters who were poor. And um, one of the sisters, the elder sister, had a secret, a way of turning into a tree right. that, that produced the flowers. And um, uh, she uh, found a way to sell them to make money. And then um, these flowers actually attracted the interest of the royal family. And the prince followed her, stalked her lovingly. Right, right. Um, which you might be able to do now that you've shaven your face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more nimble now. I can move a little more. Nimble lipped. Yeah, nim nimble lipped. Uh, That's what they call me. Uh, nimble lips. Nimble lips. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> nimble lips. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's your name as a rapper, I guess. Yeah. Um, I've strengthened my sort of facial. Anyway, but yeah, okay. So then he followed. Let's just just the major plot points. So then he 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 was yeah. in love. He stalked a little bit, and then he was in love. He stalked the lady. He took her to his bridal or to her bridal chamber. They wouldn't talk until he figured out how she turned herself into a tree. And then they fucked all over those branches. and uh, Not those branches, excuse me, those flowers. And um, the city smelled their, their ongoing passion. The, their perfume, their, the, the perfume of, their, of their doings. Okay, yeah, hit us with part two. <laughs> the perfume of their love. Yeah. Deep musk. All right, so part two. The tree of flowers continued. And... Would it be a beast story if it didn't end in an interesting way? Um, the king's youngest daughter wondered why a mountain of flowers was growing at the foot of the tower and was resentful that she'd barely seen her brother since his marriage. So one night, she stuck up the stairs of the power and peered through a crack in the door, watched her sister-in-law turn into a tree of flowers and back again to make love with her brother all night long. Her brother possessed something that she did not. So the girl went to her mother, the queen, and complained that she barely knew her sister-in-law and insisted that her brother's wife come with her friends to the orchard to swing beneath the trees or the orchard. Ordered by the queen to accompany the girls, the daughter-in-law could not refuse. In the orchard, the king's youngest daughter told her sister-in-law that she knew her secret and demanded that she turn into a tree of flowers so that the girls would have the blossoms to put in her hair. As a sister-in-law, she could not refuse and she told the girls to fetch two pitchers of water 
to pour one over her, to gather the flowers, taking care not to break a twig or tear a leaf, and then to pour the second pitcher. As she sat, meditating and softly chanting, the girls poured the first pitcher and she melted away and turned into a tree, taller than all the others in the orchard, covered with flowers of every color and fragrant with a fragrance like no other. The girls, in their frantic delight, swarmed over the tree, carelessly snatching off the blossoms and twigs and leaves. Then the wind picked up, and there was a sudden downpour. The girls hastily splashed the tree with a little water from the second pitcher and ran, drenched back to the palace. But the tree turned back into the king's son's bride. Although her face was still a moon among the stars, her body was only half a body, and the rest was crippled and bent and covered with open wounds. She lay in an open ditch for days, unable to move, almost drowning as the rain kept falling and the water ran over her. Finally, some farmers found her, and out of pity and out of fear that this misshapen thing with a radiant face might be some god in disguise, they put her on a cart and took her to the next town and left her at the entrance to the temple. Weeks went by, and then the king's eldest daughter, who had married a prince in the neighboring kingdom, came to the temple to perform her prayers. At the entranceway, she saw the misshapen thing with a face that was radiant and somehow familiar, and thinking that it might be some god in disguise, and that this god would grant her some gift, she ordered her servants to take the thing back to her palace. There the servants washed and fed her and applied ointments to heal her wounds, but her body was still half a body and she lay in a corner of the servants' quarters and watched and could not speak. At the king's palace, the son waited for his bride to return, and when she didn't appear, he summoned his sister and questioned her, but the girl was wide-eyed and professing her ignorance. The king's son lay in the bed, the bridal chamber, in the tower, sleepless, refusing to eat, refusing to speak. He waited for weeks, and then he untied his hair and matted it with earth. He smeared his body with ashes, and he took a wooden staff and a small wooden bowl and left the palace to wander alone the vastness of the world. And that's the story. Holy fuck, a heartbreaker. I love it. Oh my god. Yeah. It's, it's really just what I could have expected from you. Yeah, yeah th these are the things I gravitate to. It really is. But you're so good at reading them. Oh, thank you. I love to read. I love to read to y'all. You're a good audience. Fuck. Hmm. Ash, dirt, wanderer. I'm going to try to land this plane, by the way, at Montpellier. I believe in you. Because I think that would yeah, be... Yeah, you can do it. You can shave your mustache. You can land that plane. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. There's something in particular I love about like stories that involve like wanderers. I love it when also there's like a grief striking or, or something. There's like this this giant moment of passion or something, and uh, a person is just changed by it. You know, mm. um, that's what I like about these like stories, like legends with like hard twists that like render a person a different human. You know, I, and I think that's like why we read stories in general for the arcs. Um, we like to watch people transform, but these stark changes, like when, when a person becomes another, these moments of transformation, when they're so stark and so well presented, and you have like these specific moments of, you know, deep passion or whatever that are, that are expressed, even if they're fantastic in origin, I love them. I, I, I yeah. It is beautiful. <laughs> oh, we tapped the ground. Uh... Oh, you yeah. tapped that. Oh, we tap yeah. it. Uh, just, yeah. just don't crash. There we go. We didn't if crash I die the, in the plane. plane. I die in real life. Oh shit! You better be careful with that. <laughs> uh oh, well, let's go back on the road here. I also oh. like uh, why is it going the. Like that? Why is it going the love like in that? that story. Oh, you got this. You you got this. You know what? Landing in the grass is like. I I think that like. You We're know, have a picnic. People, People have this obsession with pavement. Like, why do you need pavement, really? There we go. That Breaking counts. Breaking all chains. Breaking all the count. chains. No, it counts. It counts. We made it. It counts. It counts. All I'm right. Still alive. You're still alive. All right, cheese. Did 
did we want to call it here? Um, it doesn't really matter to me. Whatever you want to do. Whatever I want to do. I'm mm -hmm. down to. I'm down to. We did have some a few other readers prepared, but we, we also yes. we also shaved my mustache off, and um. Extra special long season finale. We could go. We could go extra special on. Uh, Lithra's got a roll. Is um is uh is Prester still here? Lithros, thank you for coming by and thank you for letting us use your. Thanks for letting us use the Jackbox. Jackbox. Lithros. It was really fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, totally. This would be Colila Scotch Mage. I'm just finished this bottle. You are here. How long is your reading um, that you have prepped? If you had a, had to guess, Timaeus. Yeah, there was Jackbox or little. We'll we'll do more Jackbox. You know. Next week will be pure chilling. By the way, um, I'll do another movie night or something. Ten to fifteen minutes. All right, cheese. Why don't we, why don't we do a ten to fifteen minute prester? Sounds excellent. All right, we're gonna do right. ten, ten to fifteen minutes out. prester. Yes, Beast, we love you, my dude. Thanks for coming <laughs> back. It's always a pleasure to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Of course. Come hither, Prester John. We request a story from the... Hey, Prester. Howdy. Is this work? Yep, you're on, man. Okay, marvelous. So... My laptop seems to have uh, quieted down, so I th don't think I'll have to switch to my phone. Uh, you can't. Can you hear the air conditioning? Should I turn that off? No, I, I think you sound you sound fine. Marvelous. Okay, this is a Sherlock Holmes story. It's called "The Adventure of the Greek Interpreter." Let's do it. And I'm going to go into space. I'm going to bring our little icon into space. Go for it. Marvelous. Okay. During my long and intimate acquaintance with Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I had never heard him refer to his relations, and hardly ever to his own early life. This reticence upon his part had increased a somewhat inhuman effect which he produced upon me, until sometimes I found myself regarding him as an isolated phenomenon, a brain without a heart, as deficient in human sympathy as he was preeminent in intelligence. His aversion to women and his disinclination to form new friendships were both typical of his unemotional character, but not more so than his complete suppression of every reference to his own people. I had come to believe that he was an orphan with no relatives living. But one day, to my very great surprise, he began to talk to me about his brother. It was after tea on a summer evening, and the conversation, which had roamed in a desultory, spasmodic fashion from golf clubs to the causes of the change in the obliquity of the elliptic, came round at last to the question of atavism and hereditary aptitudes. The point under discussion was how far any singular gift in an individual was due to his ancestry, and how far to his own early training. In your own case, said I, from all that you have told me, it seems obvious that your faculty of observation and your peculiar facility for deduction are due to your own systematic training. To some extent, he answered thoughtfully, my ancestors were country squires who appear to have led much the same life as is natural to their class. But, nonetheless, my turn that way is in my veins, and may have come with my grandmother, who was the sister of Vernet, the French artist. Art in the blood is li liable to take the strangest forms. But how do you know that it is hereditary? Because my brother Mycroft possesses it in a larger degree than I do. This was news to me, indeed. If there were another man with such singular powers in England, how was it that neither police nor public had heard of him? I put the question with the hint that it was my companion's modesty which made him acknowledge his brother as his superior. Holmes laughed at my suggestion. My dear Watson, said he, I cannot agree with those who rank modesty among the virtues. To the logician, all things should be seen exactly as they are, and to underestimate oneself is as much a departure from truth as to exaggerate one's own powers. When I say, therefore, that Mycroft has better powers of observation than I, you may take it that I am speaking the exact and literal truth. Is he your junior? Seven years my senior. How comes it that he is unknown? Oh, he is very well known in his own circle. Where then? Well, in the Diogenes blood, for example. I had never heard of the institution, and my face must have proclaimed as much, 
for Sherlock Holmes pulled out his watch. The Diogenes Club is the queerest club in London, and Mycroft, one of the queerest men. He's always there from a quarter to five till twenty to eight. It's six now, so if you care for a stroll this beautiful evening, I shall be very happy to introduce you to two curiosities. Five minutes later, we were in the street, walking towards Regent Circus. You wonder, said my companion, why it is that Mycroft does not use his powers for detective work. He is incapable of it. But I thought you said... I said that he was my superior in observation and deduction. If the art of the detective began and ended in reasoning from an armchair, my brother would be the greatest criminal agent that ever lived. But he has no ambition and no energy. He will not even go out of his way to verify his own solutions, and would rather be considered wrong than take the trouble to prove himself right. Again and again I have taken a problem to him, and have received an explanation which has afterward proved to be the correct one. And yet he is... And yet he was absolutely incapable of working out the practical points which must be gone into before a case could be laid before a judge or jury. It is not his profession, then? By no means. What is to me a means of livelihood is to him the merest hobby of a dilettante. He has an extraordinary facility for figures, and audits the books in some of the government departments. Mycroft lodges in Pall Mall, and he walks round the corner into Whitehall every morning and back every evening. From year's end to year's end, he takes no other exercise, and is seen nowhere else, except only in the Diotomies Club, which is just opposite his rooms. I cannot recall the name. Very likely not. There are many men in London, you know, who, some from shyness, some from misanthropy, have no wish for the company of their fellows, yet they are not averse to comfortable chairs and the latest periodicals. It is for the convenience of these that the Diotenes Club was started, and it now contains the most unsociable and unclubable men in town. No member is permitted to take the least notice of any other one. Save in the stranger's room, no talking is, under any circumstances, permitted, and three offences, if brought to the notice of the committee, render the talker liable to expulsion. My brother was one of the founders, and I have found myself in a very soothing atmosphere. We had reached Pormall as we talked, and we're walking down it from St. James End. Sherlock Holmes stopped at a door some little distance from the Carlton, and, cautioning me not to speak, he led the way into the hall. Through the glass panelling, I caught a glimpse of a large and luxurious room, in which a considerable number of men were sitting about and reading papers, each in his own little nook. Holmes showed me into a small chamber, which looked out onto Paul Moore, and then, leaving me for a minute, he came back with a companion who I knew could only be his brother. Mycroft Holmes was a much larger and stouter man than Sherlock. His body was absolutely corpulent, but his face, though massive, had preserved something of the sharpness of expression which was so remarkable in that of his brother. His eyes, which were of a peculiarly light, watery grey, seemed to always retain that faraway, introspective look which I had only observed in Sherlock's when he was exerting his full powers. I am glad to meet you, sir, said he, putting out a broad, fat hand like the flipper of a seal. I hear, Sherlock's every I hear of Sherlock everywhere since you became his chronicler. By the way, Sherlock, I expected to see you around last week to consult me over that manor house case. I thought you might be a little out of your depth. No, I solved it, said my friend, smiling. It was Adams, of course. Yes, it was Adams. I was sure of it from the first. The two sat down together in the bow window of the club. To anyone who wishes to study mankind, this <coughs> is the spot, said Mycroft. Look at the magnificent types. Look at these two men who are coming toward us, for example. The billiard maker and the other. Precisely. Uh, what do you make of the other? The two men had stopped outside the window. Some chalk marks over the waistcoat pocket were the only signs of billiards which I could see in one of them. The other was a very small, dark fellow, with his hat pushed back and several packages under his arm. An old soldier, I perceive, said Sherlock. And very recently discharged, remarked the brother. A certain India, I see. And a non-commissioned officer. A royal artillery, I fancy, said Sherlock. And a widower, but with child. Children, my dear boy, children. Come, said I, laughing. This is a little too much. Surely, answered Holmes, it is not hard to say that a man with that bearing, expression of authority, and sun-baked skin is a soldier, is more than a private, and is not long from India. Uh, that he has not left the service long is shown by his still wearing his ammunition boots, as they are called, observed Mycroft. He is not the cavalry stride, yet he wore his hat on one side, as is shown by the lighter skin on that side of his brow. 
His weight is against his being a sapper. He is in the artillery. Uh, then, of course, his complete mourning shows that he lost someone very dear. The fact that he is doing his own shopping looks as though it were his wife. He has been buying things for children, you perceive. There is a rattle, which shows that one of them is very young. The wife probably died in childbed. The fact that he has a picture book under his arm shows that there is another child to be thought of. I had begun to understand what my friend meant when he said that his brother possessed even keener faculties than he did himself. He glanced across at me and smiled. Mycroft took snuff from a tortoiseshell box and brushed away the wandering grains from his coat front with a large red silk handkerchief. By the way, Sherlock, said he, I have had something quite after your own heart, a most singular problem. Submitted to my judgment. I really had not the energy to follow it up, save in a very incomplete fashion, but it gave me a basis for some very pleasing speculations. If you would care to hear the facts, my dear Mycroft, I should be delighted. The brother scribbled your note upon a leaf of his pocketbook, and, ringing the bell, he handed it to the waiter. I have asked Mr. Mellis to step across, said he. He lodges on the floor above me, and I have some slight acquaintance with him, which led him to come to me in his perplexity. Mr. Mellis is a Greek by extraction, as I understand, and he is a remarkable linguist. He earns his living partly as interpreter in the law courts, and partly by acting as guide to any wealthy Orientals who may visit the Northumberland Avenue hotels. I think I will leave him to tell his very remarkable experience in his own fashion. A few minutes later, we were joined by a short, stout man, whose olive face and coal black hair proclaimed his southern origin, though his speech was that of an educated Englishman. He shook hands eagerly with Sherlock Holmes, and his dark eyes sparkled with pleasure when he understood that the specialist was anxious to hear his story. I do not believe that the police credit me. On my word, I do not, said he, in a wailing voice, just because they have never heard of it before. They think that such a thing cannot be. But I know that I shall never be easy in my mind until I know what has become of my poor man with the sticking plaster upon his face. I am all attention, said Sherlock Holmes. This is Wednesday, Wednesday evening said Mr. Mellis. Well then, it was on Monday night, only two days ago, you understand, that all this happened. I am an interpreter, as perhaps my neighbour here has told you. I interpret all languages, or nearly all, but as I am a Greek by birth, and with a Grecian name, it is with that particular tongue that I am principally associated. For many years I have been the chief Greek interpreter in London, and my name is very well known in the hotels. It happens, not unfrequently, that I am sent for at strange hours by foreigners who get into difficulties, or by travellers who arrive late and wish my services. I was not surprised, therefore, on Monday night, when a Mr. Latimer, a very famous young man, came up to my rooms and asked me to accompany him in a cab, which was waiting at the door. A Greek friend had come to see him upon business, he said, and as he could speak nothing but his own tongue, the services of an interpreter were indispensable. He gave me to understand that his house was some little distance off, in Kensington, and he seemed to be in a great hurry, bustling me rapidly into the cab, when we had descended into the street. I say into the cab, but I soon became doubtful as to whether it was not a carriage in which I found myself. It was certainly more roomy than the ordinary four-wheel disgrace to London, and the fittings, though frayed, were of rich quality. Mr. Latimer seated himself opposite to me, and we started off through Charing Cross and up the Shaftesbury Avenue. We had come out upon Oxford Street, and I had ventured some remark as to this being a roundabout way to Kensington, when my words were arrested by the extraordinary conduct of my companion. He began by drawing a most formidable-looking bludgeon, loaded with lead from his pocket, and switching it backwards and forwards several times, as if to test its weight and strength. Then he placed it, without a word, upon the seat beside him. Having done this, he drew up the windows on each side, and I found to my astonishment they were covered with paper so as to prevent my seeing through them. I'm so sorry to cut off your view, Mr. Mellis, said he. The fact is that I have no intention that you should see what the place is to which we are driving. It might possibly be inconvenient to me if you could find your way there again. As you can imagine, I was utterly taken aback by such an address. My companion was a powerful, a broad-shouldered young fellow, and apart from the weapon, I should not have had the slightest chance in a struggle with him. This is very extraordinary conduct, Mr. Latimer, I stammered. You must be aware that what you are doing is quite illegal. It is somewhat of a liberty, no doubt, said he, but we'll make it up to you. But I must warn you, however, Mr. Mellis, that if at any time tonight you attempt to raise an alarm or do anything which is against my interests, you will find it a very serious thing.
I beg you to remember that no one knows where you are, and that whether you are in this carriage or in my house, you are equally in my power. His words were quiet, but he had a rasping way of saying them which was very menacing. I sat in silence, wondering what on earth could be his reason for kidnapping me in this extraordinary fashion. Whatever it might be, it was perfectly clear that there was no possible use in my resisting, and that I could only wait to see what might befall. For nearly two hours we drove without my having the least clue as to where we were going. Sometimes the rattle of the stones told of a paved causeway, and at others our smooth, silent course suggested asphalt, but save by this variation in sound there was nothing at all which could in the remotest way help me to form a guess as to where we were. The paper over each window was impenetrable to light, and a blue curtain was drawn across the glasswork in front. It was a quarter past seven when we left Pormall, and my watch showed me that it was ten minutes to nine when we at last came to a standstill. My companion let down the window, and I caught a glimpse of a low, arched doorway with a lamp burning above it. As I was hurried from the carriage, it swung open, and I found myself inside the house, with a vague impression of a lawn and trees on each side of me as I entered. Whether these were private grounds, however, or a bona fide country, was more than I could possibly venture to say. There was a coloured glass lamp inside, which was turned so low that I could see little save that the hall was of some size and hung with pictures. In the dim light, I could make out that the person who had opened the door was a small, mean-looking, middle-aged man with rounded shoulders. As he turned towards us, the glint of the light showed me that he was wearing glasses. Is this Mr. Mellis, Harold? said he. Yes. Well done, well done. No ill will, Mr. Mellis, I hope, but we could not get on without you. You'll deal fair with us, you'll not regret it, but if you try any tricks, God help you. He spoke in a jerky, nervous fashion, and with little giggling laughs in between, but somehow he impressed me with fear more than the other. What do you want with me? I asked. Only to ask a few questions of a Greek gentleman who was visiting us, and to let us have the answers. Say no more than you are told to say, or, here came the nervous giggle again, <laughs> you had better never have been born. As he spoke, he opened a door and showed the way into a room, which appeared to be very richly furnished. But again, the only light was afforded by a single lamp half turned down. The chamber was certainly large, and the way in which my feet sank into the carpet as I stepped across it told me of its richness. I caught the glimpses of velvet chairs, a high white marble mantelpiece, and what seemed to be a suit of Japanese armor at one side of it. There was a chair just under the lamp, and the elderly man motioned that I should sit in it. The younger had left us, but he suddenly returned through another door, leading with him a gentleman clad in some sort of loose dressing gown, who moved slowly towards us. As he came into the circle of dim light, which enabled me to see him more clearly, I was thrilled with horror at his appearance. He was deadly pale and terribly emaciated, with the protruding, brilliant eyes of a man whose spirit is greater than his strength. But what shocked me more than any signs of physical weakness was that his face was grotesquely crisscrossed with sticking plaster, and that one large pad of it was fastened over his mouth. "'Have you the slate, Harold?' cried the older man, as the strange being fell rather than sat down into a chair. "'Are his hands loose? Now then, give him the pencil. You are to ask the questions, Mr. Mellis, and he will write the answers. Ask him, first of all, whether he is prepared to sign the papers.' The man's eyes flashed fire. Never, he wrote in Greek upon the slate. On no conditions, I asked at the bidding of our tyrant. Only if I see her married in my presence by a Greek priest whom I know. The man giggled in his venomous way. You know what awaits you then. I care nothing for myself. These are samples of the questions and answers which made up our strange half-spoken, half-written conversation. Again and again, I had to ask him whether he would give in and sign the document. Again and again, I had the same indignant reply. But soon a happy thought came to me. I took to adding on little sentences of my own to each question. Innocent ones at first to test whether either of our companions knew anything of the matter. And then, as I found that they showed no sign, I played a more dangerous game. Our conversation ran something like this. You can do no good by this obstinacy. Who are you? I care not. I am a stranger in London. Your fate will be on your own head. How long have you been here? Let it be so. Three weeks. The property can never be yours. What ails you? It shall not go to villains. They are starving me. You shall go free if you sign. What house is this? I will never sign. I do not know. You are not doing her any service. What is your name? Let me hear her say so. Cratides. You shall see her if you sign. Where are you from? 
then I shall never see her. Athens. Another five minutes, Mr. Holmes, and I should have warmed out the whole story under their very noses. My very next question might have cleared the matter up, but at that instant, the door opened, and a woman stepped into the room. I could not see her clearly enough to know more than that she was tall and graceful, with black hair, and clad in some sort of loose white gown. Harold, said she, speaking English with a broken accent, I could not stay away longer. It is so lonely up there with only... Oh, my God, it is Paul! Those last words were in Greek, and at the same instant the man, with a convulsive effort, tore the plaster from his lips, and, screaming out, Sophie! Sophie! rushed into the woman's arms. Their embrace was but for an instant, however, for the younger man seized the woman and pushed her out of the room, while the elder easily overpowered his emaciated victim and dragged him away through the other door. For a moment, I was left alone in the room and I sprang to my feet with some vague idea that I might in some way get a clue as to what this house was, was in which I found myself. Fortunately, however, I took no steps, for, looking up, I saw that the older man was standing in the doorway with his eyes fixed upon me. That will do, Mr. Mellis, said he. You perceive that we have taken you into our confidence over some very private business. We should not have troubled you only that our friend, who speaks Greek, and who began these negotiations, has been forced to return to the East. It was quite necessary for us to find someone to take his place, and we were fortunate in hearing of your powers. I bowed. There are five sovereigns here, said he, walking up to me, which will, I hope, be a sufficient fee. But remember, he added, tapping me lightly on the chest and giggling, if you speak to a human soul about this, one human soul of mind, well, may God have mercy upon your soul. I cannot tell you the loathing and horror with which this insignificant-looking man inspired me. I could see him better now as the lamplight shone upon him. His features were peaty and sallow, and his little pointed beard was thready and ill-nourished. He pushed his face forward as he spoke and his lips and eyelids were continually twitching like a man with St. Vitus' dance. I could not help thinking that his strange, sketchy little laugh was also a symptom of some nervous malady. The terror of his face lay in his eyes, however, steel, grey, and glistening coldly, with a malignant, inexorable cruelty in their depths. We shall know if you speak of this, said he. We have our own means of information. Now you will find the carriage waiting, and my friend will see you on your way. I was hurried through the hall and into the vehicle, again obtaining that momentary glimpse of trees and a garden. Mr. Latimer followed closely at my heels and took his place opposite me, to me without a word. In silence, we again drove for an interminable distance, with the windows raised, and at last, just after midnight, the carriage pulled up. You will get down here, Mr. Mellis, said my companion. I am sorry to leave you so far from your house, but there is no alternative. Any attempt upon your part to follow the carriage can only end in injury to yourself. He opened the door as he spoke, and I had hardly time to spring out when the coachman lashed the horse, and the carriage rattled away. I looked around me in astonishment. I was on some sort of a heathy common, mottled over with dark clumps of firs bushes. Far away stretched a line of houses with a light here and there in the upper windows. On the other side I saw the red signal lamps of a railway. The carriage which had brought me was already out of sight. I stood gazing round and wondering where on earth I might be when I saw someone coming towards me in the darkness. As he came up to me, I made out that it was a railway porter. Can you tell me what this place is? I asked. Wandsworth Common, said he. Can I get a train into town? If you walk on a mile or so to Clapton Junction, said he, you will be just in time for the last to Victoria. So that was the end of my adventure, Mr. Holmes. I do not know where I was, nor whom, with, uh, who, nor whom I spoke with, nor anything, save what I have told you. But I know that there is foul play going on, and I want to help that unhappy man if I can. I told the whole story to Mr. Mycroft Holmes the next morning, and, subsequently, to the police. We all sat in silence for some little time after listening to this extraordinary narrative. Then Sherlock looked across at his brother. Any steps? he asked. Mycroft picked up the Daily News, which was lying on a side table. Anybody supplying any information as to the whereabouts of a Greek gentleman named Paul Cretides from Athens, who is unable to speak English, will be rewarded. A similar reward pay paid to anyone giving information about a Greek lady, whose first name is Sophie. X2473. That was all in the dailies. No answer. How about the Greek legation? I have inquired. Uh, they know nothing. A wire to the head of the Athens police, then. Uh, Sherlock has all the energy of the family, said Mycraft turning to me. 
Well, you take up the case by all means, and let me know if you can do any good. Certainly, answered my friend, rising from his chair. I'll let you know, and Mr. Mellis also. In the meantime, Mr. Mellis, I should certainly be on my guard if I were you, for of course they must know through these advertisements that you have betrayed them. As we walked home together, Holmes stopped at the telegraph office and sent off several wires. You see, Watson, he remarked, our evening has been by no means wasted. Some of my most interesting cases have come to me in this way through Mycroft. The problem which we have just listened to, although it carried me to what one explanation, has still some distinguishing features. You have hopes of solving it? Well, knowing as much as we do, it will be singular indeed if we fail to discover the rest. You must yourself have formed some theory which will explain the facts to which we have listened. In a vague way, yes. What was your idea, then? It seemed to me that to be obvious that this Greek girl had been carried off by the young Englishman named Harold Latimer. Carried off from where? Athens, perhaps. Sherlock Holmes shook his head. This young man could not talk a word of Greek. The lady could talk English fairly well. Fairly well. It inference that she had been in English some little time. But he had not been in... But he had not been in Greece. Well, then, we will presume that she had come on a visit to England, and that this herald had persuaded her to fly with him. That is more probable. Then the brother, for that I fancy must be the relationship, comes over from Greece to interfere. He impudently puts himself into the power of the young man and his older associate. They seize him and use violence towards him in order to make him sign some papers to make over the girl's fortune, of which he may be trustee to them. This he refuses to do. In order to negotiate with them, they have to get on get an interpreter, and they pitch upon this Mr. Mellis, having used some other one before. The girl is not told of the arrival of her brother, and finds it out by the merest accident. Excellent, Watson, cried Holmes. I really fancy that you are not far from the truth. You see that we hold all the cards, and we have only to fear some sudden act of violence on their part. If they give us time, we must have them. But how can we find out where this house lies? Well, if our conjecture is correct, and the girl's name is, or was, Sophie Catrides, we should have no difficulty in tracing her. That must be our main hope, for the brother, of course, is a complete stranger. It is clear that some time has elapsed since this herald established his relations with the girl, some weeks at any rate, uh, since, si since the brother in Greece has had time to hear of it and come across. If they have been living in the same place during this time, it is probable that we shall have some answer to Mycroft's advertisement. We had reached our house in Baker Street whilst we had been talking. Holmes ascended the stairs first, and as he opened the door of our room, he gave a start of surprise. Looking over his shoulder, I was equally astonished. His brother Mycroft was sitting smoking in the arming chair. Come in, Sherlock. Come in, sir, said he, blandly, smiling at our surprised faces. You don't expect such energy from me, do you, Sherlock? But somehow this case attracts me. How did you get here? I passed you in a hansom. There has been some new development. I had an answer to my advertisement. Ah, yes, it came within a few minutes of your leaving. And to what effect? Mycroft Holmes took out a sheet of paper. Here it is, said he, written with a J-pen on royal cream paper by a middle-aged man with a weak constitution. Sir, he says, in answer to your advertisement of today's date, I beg to inform you that I know the young lady in question very well. If you should care to call upon me, I could give you some particulars as to her painful history. She is living at present in the Myrtles, Beckenham. Yours faithfully, J. Davenport. He writes from Lower Brixton, said Mycroft Holmes. Do you not think that we might drive to him now, Sherlock, and learn these particulars? My dear Mycroft, a brother's life is more valuable than a sister's story. I think we should call at Scotland Yard for Inspector Gregson and go straight out to Beckenham. We know that a man is being done to death, and every hour may be vital. Better pick up Mr. Mellis upon our way, I suggested. We may need an interpreter. Excellent, said Sherlock Holmes. Send the boy at once for a four-wheeler, and we shall be off. He opened the table drawer as he spoke, and I noticed that he slipped his revolver into his pocket. Yes, said he, in answer to my glance. I should say from what we have heard that we are dealing with a particularly dangerous gang. It was almost dark before we found ourselves in Pall Mall, at the rooms of Mr. Mellis. A gentleman had just called for him, and he was gone. Can you tell me where? asked Mycroft Holmes. I don't know, sir, answered the woman who had opened the door. I only know that he drove away with the gentleman in a carriage. Did the gentleman give a name? No, sir. He wasn't a tall, handsome, dark young man. Oh, no, sir. He was a little gentleman with glasses. Thin in the face, but very pleasant in his ways, for he was laughing all the time that he was talking. 
Come along, cried Sherlock Holmes abruptly. This crow's serious, he observed as we drove to Scotland Yard. These men have got hold of Melius again. He is a man of no physical courage, as they are well aware from their experience the other night. This villain was able to terrorize him the instant that he got into his presence. No doubt they want his professional services, but, having used him, they may be inclined to punish him for what they will regard as his treachery. Our hope was that by taking train we might soon get to Beckingham we might, we might get to Beckingham as soon as, or sooner, than the carriage. Upon reaching Scotland Yard, however, it was more than an hour before we could get Inspector Gregson and comply with the legal formalities which would enable us to enter the house. It was a quarter to ten before we reached London Bridge, and a half past before the four of us alighted on the Beckingham platform. A drive of half a mile brought us to the Myrtles, a large, dark house standing back from the road on its own grounds. Here we dismissed our cab and made our way up into the drive together. The windows are all dark, remarked the inspector. The house seems deserted. Our birds are flown and the nest empty, said Holmes. Why do you say so? A carriage heavily loaded with luggage has passed out during the last hour. The inspector laughed. I saw the wheel tracks in the light of the gate lamp, but where does the luggage come in? You may have observed the same wheel tracks going the other way, but the outward bound ones were very much deeper, so much so that we can say for a certainty that there was a very considerable weight on the carriage. You got a trifle beyond me there, said the inspector, shrugging his shoulders. It will not be an easy door to force, but we will try if we cannot make someone hear us. He hammered loudly at the knocker and pulled at the bell, but without any success. Holmes had slipped away, but he came back in a few minutes. I have a window open, said he. It is, a more, it is a mercy that you are on the side of the force and not against it, Mr. Holmes, remarked the inspector, as he noted the clever way in which my friend had forced back the catch. Well, I think that under the circumstances, we may enter without waiting for an invitation. One after the other, we made our way into a large apartment, which was evidently that in which Mr. Mellis had found himself. The inspector had lit his lantern, and by its light we could see the two doors, the curtain, the lamp, and the suit of Japanese mail, as he had described them. On the table lay two glasses, an empty brandy bottle, and the remains of a meal. What is that? asked Holmes suddenly. We all stood still and listened. A low, moaning sound was coming from somewhere above our heads. Holmes rushed to the door and out into the hall. The dismal noise came from upstairs. He dashed up. The inspector and I were at his heels, while his brother Mycroft followed as quickly as his great bulk would permit. The three doors faced us upon the second floor, and it was from the central of these that the sinister sounds were issuing, sinking sometimes into a dull mumble and rising again into a shrill whine. It was locked, but the key was on the outside. Holmes flung open the door and rushed in, but he was out again in an instant with his hand to his throat. It's charcoal, he cried. Give it time. It will clear. Peering in, we could only see that the Peering in, we could see that the only light in the room came from a dull blue flame, which flickered from a small brass tripod in the centre. It threw a livid, unnatural circle upon the floor, while in the shadows beyond we saw the vague loom of two figures, which crouched against the wall. From the open door there reeked a horrible, poisonous exhalation, which set us gasping and coughing. Holmes rushed to the top of the stairs to draw on the fresh air, and then, dashing into the room, he threw up the window and hurled the brazen tripod out into the garden. We can enter in a minute, he gasped, darting out again. Where is the candle? I doubt if we could strike a match in that atmosphere. Hold the light at the door, and we shall get them out, Mycroft. Now! With a rush, we got to the poisoned men and dragged them out onto the landing. Both of them were blue-lipped and insensible, with swollen, congested faces and protruding eyes. Indeed, so distorted were their figures that, save for this black beard and stout figure, we might have failed to recognize in one of them the Greek interpreter, who had parted from us only a few hours before at the Diotomy's Club. His hands and feet were securely strapped together, and he bore over one eye the mark of a violent blow. The other, who was secured in a similar fashion, was a tall man in the last stage of emancipation, with several strips of sticking plaster arranged in a grotesque pattern over his face. He had ceased to moan as we laid him down, and a glance showed me that for him, at least, our aid had come too late. Mr. Mellis, however, still lived, and in less than an hour, with the aid of ammonia and brandy, I had the satisfaction of seeing him open his eyes, and of knowing that my hand had drawn him back from the dark valley in which all paths meet. It was a simple story which he had to tell, and one which did but confirm our own deductions. His visitor, on entering his rooms, had drawn a life preserver from his sleeve, and had so impressed him with the fear of instant and inevitable death that he had kidnapped him for the second time. 
Indeed, it was almost mesmeric the effect with this, which this giggling ruffian had produced upon the unfortunate linguist, for he could not speak to save himself without tre with tre for he could not speak of him save with trembling hands and a blanched cheek. He had been taken swiftly to Beckenham and had acted as interpreter in a second interview, even more dramatic than the first in which the two Englishmen had menaced their prisoner with instant death if he did not comply with their demands. Finally, finding him proof against every threat, they had hurled him back into his prison, and, after reproaching Mellis with his treachery, which appeared from the newspaper advertisement, they had stunned him with a blow from a stick, and he remembered nothing more until he found us bending over him. And this was the singular case of the Grecian interpreter, the explanation of which is still involved in some mystery. We are able to find out, by communicating with the gentleman who had answered the an advertisement, that the unfortunate young lady came of a wealthy Grecian family, and that she had been on a visit to some friends in England. While, th while there, she had met a young man named Harold Latimer, who had acquired an ascendancy over her, and had eventually persuaded her to fly with him. Her friends, shocked at the event, had contented themselves with, with informing her brother at Athens, and had then washed their hands of the matter. Had, had the brother, on his arrival in England, had imprudently placed himself in the power of Latimer and of his associate, whose name was Wilson Kemp, a man of the foulest anecdotes. Antecedents. These two, finding that through his ignorance of the language he was helpless in their hands, had kept him as a prisoner and had endeavoured by cruelty and starvation to make him sign away his own and his sister's property. They had kept him in the house without the girl's knowledge and the plaster over the face had been for the purpose of making recognition difficult in case she ever did gl catch a glimpse of him. Her feminine perceptions, however, had instantly seen through the disguise, which, on the occasion of the interpreter's first visit, she had seen for the first time. The poor girl, however, was herself a prisoner, for there was no, mo no one about the house except the man who acted as coachman, and his wife, both of whom were tools of the conspirators. The finding that their secret was out, and that their prisoner was not to be coerced, the two villains, with the girl, had fled away at a few hours' notice from the furnished house, which they had hired, having first, as they thought, taken vengeance both upon the man who had defied and the one who had betrayed them. Months afterward, a curious newspaper cutting reached us from Budapest. It told how two Englishmen had been travelling with a woman. It told, it told how two Englishmen who had been travelling with a woman had met with a tragic end. They had each been stabbed, it seems, and the Hungarian police were of, were of the opinion that they had quarrelled and had inflicted mortal injuries upon each other. Holmes, however, is, I fancy, of a different way of thinking, and he finds, and he holds to this day, that if one could find the Grecian girl, one might learn how the wrongs of herself and her brother came to be avenged. The End Thank you, Prester. Thank you. That's killer. I I know I sort of faltered towards the end, but I got through it. You got through it. It takes something. Yeah. It takes something to get through it. Claps in the chat. Aw. It's very sweet of you guys. Yeah, was... yeah my estimate was way <laughs> off. I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but that does probably bring us to the to the end of our show, I think. So why don't we call it here. Um, Cheesecake, any final words for our audience for now? Well, it was wonderful to be here. I had a great time. All right, then. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheesecake, and of course the wonderful Prester John Boy. Um, this was great. Um, I feel like a new man. I now have like 9,000 notifications to get through on Twitter. I see even that someone has made... A Kersey's mustache Twitter account while I was sitting here. <laughs> Did you see this cheesecake? Yeah, I saw it. It's following me. They, they followed me pretty immediately. It's the same motherfucker that did Solar Monkey and the T Rex, and I don't. It's a little bit impersonating, but it is very funny. <laughs> it is a little bit iffy, but it is extremely funny. So. I did have to retweet one of its tweets, which said, like, sometimes what you're looking for is right under your nose. <laughs> you just need to... Yeah, that was... Oh, that's funny. good. Funny that's very good. <laughs> yeah, it's not me, dude. It's it's not me. It's definitely not me. But I've been sitting here. You've been watching me. How the fuck... What am I going to... What, do you think I made a whole Twitter account while we were all just sitting here? <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. 
All right, guys, this is fucking great. I, let's get off here before more crazy shit happens. Um, everybody, right, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Um, have an excellent night. Uh, next week, I think we'll probably just watch a movie. So if you want to come by, last time uh, at the end of season one, we did Santa Con Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. So we'll, we'll find something, so find something pimping for next time. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.